All righty, I think it's time. I think it's time. Let's get started. So yesterday, of course, as you may not know or know, it was my birthday. Yeah, yet another one. 71 was one day as of today, as of 6.30 this morning, actually. That's when my poor mom, who had trouble giving birth to me, she tells me constantly, she used to, she's in heaven now, but she used to tell me constantly how much trouble I gave her. I was one of those troublesome births that had the uh, umbilical cord wrapped around the neck. Yeah, it was tough. But anyway, my mother was tough too. So we are here. We're going to talk about it. It's, it's been because basically it's been a really kind of a dead week for information and printers. Um, I did have Monday, Tuesday um, with Nathan as well as Friday. I helped a neighbor whose wife wants to start a YouTube channel. She's a Chinese national American citizen now, but uh, she wants to start a cuisine type channel. And so uh, she really has no clue how to do that, what she needs to accomplish that with and so forth. So I helped her out. Uh, I think it was Friday afternoon and uh, Nathan and I had a great time as well. And then that evening we celebrated a little bit my birthday. We had some Middle Eastern food brought in and uh, we had a hell of a banquet. It was delicious. And then Nathan sang happy birthday to me. I almost died laughing because he got a little carried away 
dancing and acting up, but it was fun. It's always fun. So today I decided to tackle with you guys, at least here live, cartridge refilling, okay? Yeah, that's dangerous because they, it can get messy, as you guys know, but I decided, why not? Let's give it a try and see if I can at least successfully do this in front of you all. So as far as the XP 1500, 15,000 that is, not available still. Yeah, not available. Nothing. In fact, I'm, I'm still wondering, like, what in the world is going on? Because hardly anything is available, especially even on the, on the used market. And so I think, as someone told me, kind of off the cuff, that the factories over there in Indonesia, I think it, it was, maybe someplace else. I don't know where Epson uh, manufactures their printers, but that they had to be closed down for quite a long time. And so we just burned through all of the stock that we had in the U.S. That's it. So there's nothing. Epson USA, as I told you, last week and the previous week and the previous week, nothing. Hardly nothing available. They do have the new models, I believe. Um, but again, we're not interested in those at this point because there's no way we can use them with third party inks. We are refillers. We are refillers who either use OEM ink to refill because we are after the best quality okay, results, the biggest longevity that we can get out of those prints and still print at a relatively low cost. The next best thing, of course, is a good third party ink that we can buy and save ourselves, you know, maybe as high as 80%. Okay. So that's always the goal. But when we do that, unless by some magic manufacturing process, they can achieve the longevity of OEM, it's not going to happen. That's something that you have to then accept. If you do nothing, you're just going to lose like 80% of the longevity, period. Um, if you take a few extra steps, which I have discussed before, sprays, I have a bunch of bottles down here of sprays, different kinds of protectant sprays for your prints. That's imperative if you care about your images, even if it's not for sale, of course, you wouldn't be using third-party inks. I hope not. You should not. You should use OEM. I expect you to give when you sell something to me highest quality everything all around and so anyway but for your own use for your own walls living room you know hallways whatever even if you're a professional and you want to decorate your hallways in your offices then you need to protect them and that you know comes in many forms um you know under glass uh especially if you really want to go nuts you can buy uv glass you can have a, a custom frame made. It's going to cost you as much as it would have cost you, you know, had you printed a hundred of those with OEM ink. Yeah, there's very, it's very expensive route or route. I got out. I got yelled at because I said route instead of route, and I got corrected. And I'm thinking, do you not have anything better to do? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. Some of the things that people post as a comment. Uh, before I go. Too, for, too far off my track here. Somebody also corrected me in the way I pronounce my own surname. Yeah. This was an Irishman that grew up in Argentina or Argentina. So when I say Jose Rodriguez, he told me I didn't pronounce the R strongly enough. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, so we're back to protecting your prints. What do you do? Well, spray them. Especially the ones that I would really spray are the ones that are more artsy type medias. Your texture papers, the ones that don't have, that are not RC coated or resin coated, they have no protection in the back. The, the base is just open fibers, okay? Ozone can get in there, especially if you're printing with a uh, dye ink ink set. So the ozone will just oxidize those inks. And yeah, yeah. Um, it's getting to the point now that these dye inks are actually pretty good now. Um, again, it depends on your environment. I have many prints that I did years ago that are still fine. And yet in some other environment, they might start fading within a month or two. So it just depends highly on your environment. So I don't take any chances. If I want something to last, 
I will spray it. I will put it on the glass. Okay, that's it. And then, of course, don't put it, you know, where the brightest sunlight is. Okay, come on, you know, use your head. So <laughs> I, I, it happens a lot, believe me. And so people then are surprised when their prints begin to fade, and they will begin to fade in kind of a non-linear fashion, meaning that the black kind of starts to fade. It turns brownish. You start getting this weird sepia-looking tone. Uh, your yellow starts to fade, so you got more uh, emphasis on the magenta and cyan parts of the image or the, the mixture of the dots. So, yeah, you start losing your color balance. It's crazy. A good ink that fades still but fades equally is what you really want if you're going to go third-party route, route or route, okay? So keep that in mind. And although Precision Colors, the older signature, the older, not signature edition, but the older uh, PC42 inks, as far as Ardenberg uh, test results were, and I don't think he actually finished them because they ran out of funds. At, at one point, I don't know, he gave me kind of a preliminary result. He said that it faded, but it wasn't fading unequally. In other words, it was fading pretty much equally, so it was just simply getting lighter. It, the color balance was not changing drastically. And again, that's a positive. If you're going to fade, then at least fade equally. You know what I mean? Don't do not do a huge, weird shift of color. All right, so we got a bunch of people here. Let's see, 42 so far. That's really good. Um, I got into contact. The people at, uh, what are they called? Ink Chip. They're in Hong Kong. But the lady that I speak with or communicate with via email, she has straight up Russian names. So I don't know. I don't know how that is. But anyway. Um, they are after me to start doing something. I can't. There's no 1500. I don't want to just do any old printer. Okay. They have a lot of printers they support, but you need to find, you need to be able to get those printers. Okay. The ones that they are supporting are printers for which you can get third party refillable cartridges. Okay. So some of them may be locked out. Okay. So you may not even be able to use those third-party chips, especially like newer iterations of that particular model. P800 comes to mind. The new P800, the ones you get now, forget about it. It's not going to be possible to even get one use out of a set of refillable cartridges. So you need to switch over to that immediately, pretty much to that chip list or ink chip, as they are called them, calling themselves. Uh, install that firmware, and then your cartridges will just no longer need chips. In fact, they claim you don't even need a chip on the cartridge, okay? That's dangerous because you need to have a chip for those contacts to actually not get jammed, okay, in internally. But theoretically, you do not even, even need the chips for color ID, apparently, okay? That I have to discuss, and I, I'm inviting them to come on board. She is suggesting her boss maybe would, would do the live stream and then we would run it like maybe early on a Saturday morning, okay, or or, or a a Sunday morning. That means they're I mean Sunday morning. That means they got done with work already Monday evening over there. So maybe like that. I don't know what what would work best for them. So uh, we'll be getting back in touch with them and, and and see what happens. But the thing is, I get I got to get my hands on a fifteen hundred because really, I was looking at the other models that they have. A support for and looking for something that is suitable for photos okay when you look at Epson and then you search for like home photo in other words so that we get a hold of our 13 inch at least 13 inch printers it's just a p700 and the xp 15,000 that's it there's a letter size one um, you know, that may or may not work. We got that letter size one over there. Let me get my finger pointer right there. We're going to be doing that. I couldn't do that this week. I was just completely tied up. My wife has some medical appointments on our, on our two free days. And by the time I got home, I just, I don't want to do anything. My back is killing me. So, you know, I just go upstairs and sit down. Uh, right now, I got a heating pad in back of me. So, you know, not much that I can get done because this will be quite a process. I don't want to do it haphazardly. I want to do it correctly. So 
it, it, it's going to happen when it happens. It, it'll be soon, though, I promise. But anyway, so yeah. So since I do not know a lot of those models, let me show you the ones that they are referring to. I'm going to pop their side up here. And maybe you guys can help me out. Okay, that would be good if you can do that. So here we go. So we have a bunch of these models, and I don't know whether, you know, what size they are. They, a lot of them seem to be maybe all in one. Can these models even be purchased, especially here in the U.S.? Okay. There's some new ones. I assume those are newer um, models of printers. We have to look at some of these here and see what would be something that would be that would make sense. In other words, sure, I can if I can find any of those, they have a solution for it. Big deal. And I'm sure I can get, you know, refillable cartridges for them. But does it make sense? Is it a viable uh, second choice so that you don't have to pay God knows what for a 700 or a 900? Okay? They're not cheap, as you well know. So that is what I need help on. And I did speak to Mike Lee about that. And he is looking around to see. He's also searching for me what's available here in the USA because he cannot purchase something for me and send it to me, apparently. Um, there's some limitations as to what he can get done. So like this one here, 7210 from Workforce. And then, of course, we got the older P P400, P600, P800. So like for me, for instance, I have an R2000. You know, it's the same as the P400, basically. Um, 600 is at the R3000, basically, but just updated. And, of course, the, P9, the P800 is just a, you know, 3880 on steroids. So, yeah, I, I could go ahead and use some of those. Uh, they have an EP series here that also has support. But, again, a lot of these that have support can be used with the normally, currently available um, refillable systems. So you have to kind of say, well, should I stay with my refillable cartridges, still have ink monitoring available? There's no lockout. There's no reason for me to go chipless, always full, that is, if I don't have to, right? Now, the P800, yeah, there's no other option. So sure, that one makes sense. The P600, if you happen to have one, you can use refillable cartridges on them. You know, just, just as easy as, you know, whether you use chipless solutions or not. Okay, any kind of those types of firmware solutions. Okay, they're always full. So, you know, you would do it just because you want to do it. But some of these others that could be good options for you guys that want to photo print. Okay, get good reasonable results. And you just don't need... 13 by 19 or A3 plus. You're satisfied with A4, I think it is, and, and letter size for us US folks. So that's what I need help with. Uh, the link for this site, this, this section right here is as follows. I will post it here, you guys can access it. I know I did that last week as well. And you guys can go ahead and check it out and see what it is that you guys might be interested and then just put it on the comment section for this live stream once it becomes a video. Just add it to it. Again, I don't know any of these printers. I'm telling you, I only have been, you know, concentrating on the photo, so-called photo printers. And so if there is another option that you either own already, are using with either assist or, or third-party cartridges that are refillable, let me know. Let me know what you think might be a good option. Okay, I will get the printer if it's available still. I will get the firmware serial number as well as the firmware and then set those printers up. Okay, and again, we're looking for options that are going to become even more scarce. Okay, that's that's what's happening. All right, let's go back to good old me again. Let me close this out. I don't think I will need this anymore. All righty. Let me show you the current situation, like I said earlier. And we are looking, frantically looking for 
a 15,000. So let's go ahead and take a look at even, and, you know, when it says where to buy, okay, that means they don't have it. They don't have it. And when it says out of stock, that means no one has it. So let's go ahead. Let me see if I can get the search going here. And this is what we're looking for. Boom. Out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. Again, it says where to buy. That means you may be able to get it somewhere. So let's let's just go ahead and, uh, yeah, this one, this one had where to buy earlier today. It was from Dell, and they wanted $350, just like they want $350 here. It should be $300. That should be the uh, regular sales price. And I'm just dying for them to come up with some um, refurbished. But if there aren't any new ones even available, you know, that means refurbished is somebody bought it. Something went wrong. It's not working right. They send it back. They give them another one. And they fix it. Okay. Fix it. And they give you a year warranty just like if it was new. And that's what I'm waiting for. But again, it's not available. As you guys can see, look at that. Out of stock. Out of stock. I know I've been showing this every single week. Now, this might be good. You see the, the little expression XP970. You know, do they have that available? Let me check. Let's see if they have that available. The XP960, yeah, they have that available. So that would be a good one to use. That would be a nice little letter size printer. Oh, set up to 11 by 17. That's not bad. And it's 300 bucks. That's that's a little high, okay? That's a bit high. So anyway, let me let me quickly show you guys. Yeah, you've been looking at that. So that's that's a bit high if you ask me. So But anyway, I you know, especially for what it is. Basically, it's a letter size printer that can do 11 by 17. Okay. So that's where we are at right now. All righty. Let's say howdy to everyone who decided to hang out with me, birthday boy, this afternoon. And I appreciate that immensely. Thank you so much again. I was showing off yesterday to our teacher friends. I showed her my New York magazine, uh, you know, top 11 in the country, blah, 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 of educators and such. And so she was impressed. She didn't even know that I did that on the side. So. All right, so today the first person that came on board was Charles Verbruggen. And I got a, oh yeah, see that? This is my birthday treat right here. Krispy Kreme, nothing better. And I got, I'm going a bit Western here with salsa parilla or sarsaparilla as they call it. Mm. So good. It makes the best floats in the world you'll never go back to root beer floats if you just try one of those vanilla ice cream especially french vanilla all right so we got charles verbruggen and he says good evening everybody from antwerp he was it's already late over there in belgium uh and canon 9 9500 mark ii of course stefano says hello legend happy birthday from milan italia all righty thank you charles Hi, everybody. Yes, I appreciate that. Um, I think we missed last year's birthday. It fell on, a, on an odd date. I'm waiting for one that will fall on a Sunday, and then we'll have a, a huge party here as much as we can party. I don't think we can, but very happy birthday. Shout out to Jose. Love from all your fans. Appreciate that. Thank you so much, man. And look at this. We got a brand new person. I don't know who that is, um, but whoa. Okay, you guys can see that, right? Hello from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Bill Sturk. Nice to have you, Bill. My wife is from Milwaukee, and my sister-in-law lives in Oak Creek right now. My father-in-law worked for like 30 years at the the um, electric um, plant right there on Oak Creek. German, German uh, guy, my father-in-law, Schreiber. Uh, Edward Kilner from Toronto or near Toronto, Canada. Nice to have you here. Sony Studios, Za Photography. 
Happy birthday, he says. Thank you so much, my friend. Jan How Howman, Wowmans. Happy birthday from Palom Palombian. Where is Palombian? I'm not sure. Okay, let's see. Okay, that's the one. We got us Netherlands. We got Netherlands from Jan Van Denberg from the Netherlands. Yes, we used to drive up there. It was so much fun. That's where I had my car shipped from the U.S. here from Baltimore to uh, Rotterdam, and we went to pick it up there. And then we decided, let's go explore all of these towns up there. Uh, the weather was so much better than Belgium. Belgium was just, especially where we were at, it was very cloudy and rainy all the time. Great for your gardens, though. George, I cannot say that, Drosiotis from Cyprus. Again, that's a beautiful place as well. Happy birthday to the Grandmaster of Printing. I am not. Okay, I am not, but I do appreciate that. I really, I am not. Henry Stoffel, Wells, Maine, proud owner of a P800. Yes, all of us are. Michael Cavigliere from Epson P800 as well. Tady, Tady U, USZ, US12. Happy birthday and greetings from Montreal. All right, Richard Bender, Hagerstown, Maryland. That's a that's the guy. That's the guy I gotta start hanging out with. We're gonna we're gonna set up a uh, little meetup in. Um, yeah, I would love to. I would like I would like to have you, Richard, come on live with me some Sunday. Let's arrange that. I've been refilling cards since 1995. Used to used India ink back then. Can't stay long. Have house guests. Okay, so. Hey, whenever you can, go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and uh, arrange for a Sunday evening and people can get to meet you. You could talk about all that stuff we discussed on the phone. That was fascinating. Fascinating. Sunny Studios. He, he loves this. Didn't you just tell me you loved it? Yes, you did. I do too. Let's see who else here. Spike Madison. Canon Pro 1000. Happy birthday, Jose. Are you still counting? Counting what? What are we counting? My years? I don't. I don't count. Yeah, I don't count. No, I don't. Jerry, S S J K. Hello, legend. Happy birthday, greens from Poland. Okay, you guys keep calling me legend, please. You know I'm not. Pro ten with P C S C. And you are a lucky guy. You got. You were able to get him over there. Thank you, Michael. More, more, Moro, Moro, Emmanuel. Um, we just watched a really, really neat um, British made. I think it was like two hours, uh, where it was the the brother, supposedly the brother of um, the Sherlock Holmes, and so and then his sister, his baby sister. That was so good. Happy birthday, Mr. Jose from Bahrain. All righty. Thank you, Khalid. Appreciate that. Younger. Well, maybe. I did do my I did do my head today. I took everything off. Looks nice and smooth. Gotta do that. It's so easy. My son-in-law, Nathan's father, looks like a bear right now. It's like, dude, shave your head, please. Delane, Delane Cabano, happy birthday. I can't wait to get my Canon Pro 1000. Awesome. Let me scroll down. If I do it too fast, I, I jump and I miss a lot of people, and then they, they yell at me for missing them. I can't do that. Just because everyone else does doesn't mean I will. Uh, again, Tady does Protan use a full chroma or auto. I use full only because if I happen to have, and you know, we can start with technical stuff right now. If I happen to have an image that has a highlight that is like 255, 255, 255, if you eyedropper test it, that's not going to lay down any ink. And on auto, it will not lay down any chroma optimizer either. Okay, so you're going to have. A, an area of that highlight will be less glossy, okay? And, and that can be a problem. So if you want, 
even gloss across everything. Then choose full. That's what I do. Sure, it uses more Chrome Optimizer. Well, but it looks a hell of a lot better. A lot better. Okay. Alan Barnett from Eastern Tennessee. All righty. Manfred Chen, happy B day. Thank you, sir. Ken Larson, happy birthday from the center of the world. Interlaken, Florida. Really? Is that the center of the world? I think mm, I'll have to look at the globe and see. Where in the world is that? Lachen. Is it Interlachen or Lachen? Uh, give me some like hints near what big town. That that sounds really interesting. I've never heard of that. Vandenberg, Van, Jan Vandenberg, Pro One Thousand is a beast. Love mine. Yes, yeah, a beast and one that is uh, you need to really take good care of and use often so that you get more ink on prints. Like I always say, rather than more inks into one of these suckers right here. This is not where you want your ink to go, okay? So I know you cannot avoid these cycles that occur. And there are some strategies, and some people have discovered, like, different timing strat strategies, but still they're going to be performed. And so, and so, you know, you don't want all of that ink to be, rather than put on beautiful prints, you don't want it to go in there. You want to put it on prints is what I'm trying to say. Um Tiwo Oi Tundi Tunde Tund. Oh wow. Okay. Happy birthday, Pa Jose. You call me Papa. Gecko. Gecko's here, my friend. How, how you doing? Thank you. Happy birthday, Papa pa Jose from Nigeria. Man. I can't believe we're reaching all these people all over the world. I'm I'm ecstatic. This is awesome. Ignore alien order. Wow. Okay. Big game. James says, hi, Jose. I get a green hue on my Canon, black and white prints. On my Canon Pixma Pro 100. I am using third-party inks. I print with Canon digital photo professional software and black and white settings. Any suggestion? Uh, what inks are you using? Just quickly tell me because that's the reason. Okay. I, I just have to tell you. And... And it's also slightly kind of normal, the, the results, because it also depends on the paper. Some papers react really weird to different lighting temperature, and they will have a slightly different shift in this kind of light and in that kind of light. Yeah, it's really odd. That's why when um, third-party companies were trying, trying to come up with a good third-party ink set, they had trouble with that because apparently the, the two grays that are used on the Pro 100, you know what they call them? They refer to them as cham chameleon inks because they change color depending on the light. So check check your results, say, under a window light. Like go near your window, maybe facing north or, or east or west or south, whatever, wherever you got some nice window light and see if you still have that green tinge. But again, it might be your inks because they are a third party. All right, let's continue on. Then we're gonna get into the fun stuff. I hope I don't make a mess here. I'm trying to do this as, you know, as um, well, neatly as I possibly can. I got some napkins here to make sure that I don't make a mess, probably all over myself. Um, but anyway, we're going to demonstrate how to do refilling on several types of cartridges. So that should be a lot of fun. And I hope, you know, somewhat educational to you guys, um, especially those who are considering doing this. Stefano says, uh, or Stefano, um, I've used my P700 for my two exhibitions in Milan. Absolutely shocked by the results. I hope that's a good shock. Having Han using Hannah Mule Burita, uh, it's a fiber base 350 boom better than lab i'm telling you folks there you go yeah i mean don't get me wrong i mean i am not saying by any stretch of the imagination that you should not buy those printers okay buy them 
but you know what you're getting into. You're going to buy a freaking outstanding printer, but you're going to be using OEM inks to continue producing those freaking outstanding prints. Okay, accept that. When you go to that level, that's what you have to accept. They are great. Of course they are great. I probably will get a P900, okay? I will not bother with a 700 because I will, I want the larger immediately. I want to go the larger size because I also want to buy the roll adapter at some point in the future as well. But I will, I will accept readily that I will be using OEM inks, period. Great. I'm glad to hear you had fantastic results with that. I hope the folks that went to the exhibition were raving about your prints. I would love to see what your prints look like if you mix up the ink in the printer. And I don't mean mix ink together. <laughs> um, I may change the colors around. I don't know what you mean. You mean different sources of ink? Um, yeah, I have done that. I'm doing that right now with the Pro 1000. I'm doing, I'm, I'm using OEM for Chrome Optimizer, for yellow, for red, for magenta, and for photo black, and for blue. Okay, the rest of the colors are just the PC colors. Excellent, excellent. Um, as long as the colors, the magenta that you choose to, to replace this other magenta with is spectrally the same, okay? It cannot differ, okay? Um, I'm glad you brought that up. I think this is what you're talking about, possibly. If it's not, you know, I'm sorry. This is the perception that I got from your question. It would be like, for example, if you have a recipe that calls for, like, you know, regular wheat flour, eggs, milk, I don't know what else, you know, just name it. Well, eggs come from different farms, different kinds of chickens. Eggs are not the same eggs in California as they are from Michigan. You know, the yolk color is different. You know what I mean? The milk may have a little bit more more um, cream than the, the milk in this other, you know, area of the country where the cows are more slender. I don't know. The, the ingredients differ. So do the colors. Okay, different colors for different printers. Even though they're the same color, they differ. So you cannot be mix and matching this yellow, that that magenta, this cyan, that red. No, you can't. Uh, it's going to really not work out that well, okay? And it will take some really good profiling to kind of get you out of the water. So I just posted all the new members for my Facebook group, and people are just responding. I always do that. I always recognize everyone. All righty, next. My Pro One is beeping 26 flashes. I have never seen 26 flashes, but it's a Pro One, so I'm not surprised. I, I, I just hate to tell you. Um, I just, what, day before yesterday, I did uh, nozzle checks on my Pro One, Pro 1000 as well. And I did another, I did a uh, Q image, um, so-called purge sheet. And luckily, it printed, okay? At least the Pro 1 did. The Pro 1000, after just a couple of days of not printing, did an agitation cycle, okay? And it clearly tells you right there, agitation cycle, agitating ink. So 26 flashes, you need to look that up. You know, just, just go to Canon and look up your error codes and see what 26 flashes is. It's a 26, I mean, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth flashes. Normally, the the most famous error is the B200, and that, I believe, is 10 flashes followed by a pause. So make sure you don't have a pause, you know, through that flashing sequence. Do you print only color or also black and white? Okay, that's for the... Uh, P700. Cliff Fit. Oh, man, you haven't been around for a while. Glad to have you back, my friend. I remember you. Um, from when and from where? My gosh. I remember that name very clearly. Thank you so much, man. 
George Gabb, West Texas, 110 Fahrenheit. Man, it's been so cool here. We just set up our duvet on the bed just minutes before I came down. Yeah, this old man gets cold at night. I am a blanket hoarder. I, I, I just, you know, yeah, like a big baby. But hey, I'm also, who cares? Stefano says, I print black and white only. Okay. So, yeah, um, if you're printing using black and white mode, like you said, you could adjust that. Okay. There are some, you know, because you're printing without a ICC profile. When you print with black and white mode, you do not use your, your, your regular profiling system. It's printing strictly through the driver. So you can actually adjust. Okay. If it's green, then you want to add toward magenta okay and that will neutralize that slightly green tint that you say you're getting okay and you can you can fine tune it to the ninth degree i mean it's really neat the same thing for um like epson um printers that have a a uh, like a k3 system ultra chrome k3 you can do that so here's the uh, link that i wanted you guys to make sure you record and please look at it and make sure that you um if you own any of the printers listed and you have experienced that they are good enough for photo printing, let me know. Please let me know in the comments right below. That would be awesome. And then hopefully I'll be able to find something, okay? Something else to add, right? All right. For 21 flashes, press the printer resume cancel button to dismiss the error. Then try to print again, set the... Printer not to detect the width. Oh, okay. That might be, again, see? It may be a, a uh, width detection mismatch between your printer, the LED that's, you know, on the Pro 1000, for instance, it's got that. The Pro 1 doesn't have one, but I don't know. Just, just do what he says. I have never had a 21 flash error so i cannot really discuss matt barnes man epson printers are all sold out here in canada see what i mean you see yeah they are uh pc hung up on me he hung up on me because there was a local shop that had a xp 15,000, and he said gotta go I, I, wait, 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 wait. click you know he was gone and he didn't, he was able to nab it before someone else did. So at least he has one. I'm going to send him one of my serial numbers. I got, I got two serial numbers for the firmware. And so I'm going to give him one, but I'm still waiting for me to get one because I want to do a whole series of videos on that printer. I'm also going to be looking at the Canon um, 86 something. I don't know what it is, but it's a 13 inch printer. Also awesome. I'm going to be purchasing one of those as well. Again, every, anything that will be an, a, a reasonable option for the expensive models that are out and can still perform well for you and allow you to use a third-party product because that's that's the goal here. And, of course, um, PC needs to come up with some new ink sets to support these other printers. Uh, otherwise, he will be stagnant as well. Ma Messi Manful, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. You are a beautiful lady, by the way. Yep. Love to have the ladies here with us. Uh, we're getting more and more females, which is, again, great. They're, the, they're more, um, what do you call it, um, creative than most of us, really, when you think about it. Uh, my daughter is a creative goddess, and uh, sometimes I hate her. <laughs> And I tell her that. How the hell did you do that, sweetie? But that it's just simple. I said, no, it's not simple. Nazim Martin, happy birthday, Jose, from Cape Town, South Africa. See what I'm telling you is I need to keep track of everybody, all their countries. It's amazing. Nobody believes me. No one believes me. Make sure that I don't get it. okay. Oh, we missed one. Christian Ebner. Make sure that I don't miss anybody. From Vienna, Austria. Wow. 
the the city of the walls strauss yep thank you leif wicklin from sundwall sweden my wife just found out she's got a little swedish in her as well wow big game james happy birthday was it didn't you wish me already thank you anyway i love it twice if you did mohammed farouk what a name can jehan zeb khan look at this young man handsome dude hi mr jose love your videos i learned a lot from you from holy Makkah city from saudi arabia wow i have my friend's daughter uh is actually uh working there right now i think she's um She's an airline stewardess from one of the airlines. Okay. And she is from Ghana. Thank you. Beautiful lady. Alino Bino. Happy birthday from Bronxville. Okay, I cannot see. That's a lady as well. Wow. That is really cool. Nolene, man, last night unboxed a Pro 10, and wow, on the third day, on the third try, I printed your V, your V, oh, your V00 uh, printer setup image, Q image ultimate. The image is great. Well, now it's time to do your own work. Now it's time, but make sure that your monitor is calibrated. That's the catch. Um, I think next week we're going to cover color management. I'm going to walk you step by step through everything you need to know i'm going to bore you to death but at the end of it you will know exactly what you need to do there should be no questions okay that's the goal getting ready for my first high-end printer when i can find it yeah i know good luck again i'm hoping it's something easily explainable and not some weird um situation going on or you know what i mean uh we don't want that we want okay the factory is closed that's why we haven't been able to manufacture any printers that would make sense and i i could accept that and i just sit back and wait you know but if something weird is going on then i really um that would not be good so michael de luca is here my good friend michael uh he says i'm the best well i i, I try to be but I am far from being the best. Uh, skin is in. What does that mean? Jesus Cosme. Uh, happy birthday, Jose. Thank you, Jesus. Hello, Jose. Says Matt. And what are your thoughts on metal prints? I've seen some of your videos on the topic. I'd like to know your preference versus metal photograph paper. You mean metallic type paper? Do you need metallic or do you need actual, you mean actual printing on metal? Sublimation. So, yeah, that's metal. Okay. So, I need to find where I put those. I don't have them here. Gosh. I need to have the stuff always with me. I try, but sometimes I'm just not able to. All right. Where did I put that? Anyway, you have seen my metal prints. Yeah. I think they're over here. Let me see. I just dropped all kinds of stuff. Here they are. Just back as carefully as we can. I got prints everywhere. this year for now anyway so this is printing on metal you can actually sublimate let me get closer to the mic we can actually sublimate to any any solid relatively non-flexible substrate that has been coated with um something that can be sublimated to and that is polyester polyester resin in its clear form is a two-part type resin that's what you use for cars okay when you go to the body shop and they redo your car, they paint it, they apply a clear coat. But that clear coat, you know why they bake your car afterwards? Yeah, under lights. That's because that has to be cured. And the same thing goes with polyester coating for these types of substrates, whether it's a, a, a T-shirt, 
whether it is a, a tile for the wall, a decorative tile that you print an image on, or whatever, whatever it may be. I've done it on Masonite also. So this is what you get. So the back is just aluminum. And it also has been coated, by the way. It's coated on both sides. So you can actually print on the back and get kind of a weird translucent look. Really neat and interesting. But if you want a regular photographic result, you print on the side that has the undercoating that is white and then the overcoat that is polyester. Okay. And that will accept. You can see my monitor right on it. It's, it's difficult to align it so that you don't get a reflection. Look at that. I mean, it's just incredible. And, and look at the surface. It's not marred at all. These are just laying on top of each other. I really don't even take that great care from them. And again, no harm. So yeah, for sublimation, you need an Epson printer. Okay, any printer that has at least four colors, yellow, cyan, magenta, and black. If you have light cyan and light magenta, so much the better. Um, I'm trying to, um, at this point, I keep saying this every week, I'll get to it sometime. My R3000 does not have a working black ink switch valve, so right now it's on, it's on nothing but matte black ink. I'm going to change that to a sublimation printer. Everybody's thanking me. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to change that to a sublimation printer, and I'm going to dedicate it only for that. And so that should be good. Those were done on a four color Workforce 1100, a cheap, pretty much cheap piece of junk but um, produces great prints. And the inks, by the way, are from Precision Colors, okay? They are not known for sublimation inks, but they have them. Or you can just buy a ready-to-use printer from eBay. It's already been turned chipless, and they'll run a couple hundred dollars, you know? And it'll be usually 11 by 17 max capacity, which is... Pretty good. I mean, 11 by, you know, to me, a 10 by 12 is good enough. 11 by 14, you can still do it on one of those printers. And then you need a heat press and a few other things. You need some good transfer paper, and um, it'll get you there. It, it, it'll work just fine. Okay, let me make sure that I... Do not miss anybody. Okay. Ted says, thank you. And back in one hour, says Michael. All righty. We'll be here. Ah, south of Jacksonville. Is that it? And 30 miles west of Gainesville, Georgia. Is that Georgia? Yeah. Okay. Pedro Lobo. Wow. He's a wolf from Portugal. Okay, that's what I am. 31% Portuguese as well as 41% Spanish and a bunch of other countries. My God, I could not believe it. How much DNA from my ancestors I carry. Jim Haviland. Happy birthday, Jose. Thank you, Jim. Thomas Wetterer from Germany. Wow. Holy cow. We are up to 66 Badger Tail, Scott from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I have two Canon Pro 10s in the shop, and I love precision inks. Awesome. Yeah, um, you know, someone was asking me, well, you know, and we'll get into this. This will be a good little subject to transition to as well. Um, about ink out, and I have nothing against ink out, but I'll tell you the differences when we get to that. Let's just finish up real quick here. And I want to make sure I don't miss anyone. Manfred Chan says, I am, I am getting a slight green hue. Yeah, you said that before. Um, using the I, paper ICC profile, but not printing from the test reference image. Okay, then then if you don't get it with your test references, reference image, what's the, what's the other variable? You see, that's why it's so important to print with that image, okay? Because that image... You do not edit it. So it, it, there's no influence by you editing it, okay, from your monitor. Okay, you follow me? So when you are then printing 
from edited images or images that you converted, that's no longer that untampered, you know, evaluation image. Okay, so it has to do the only variable, of course. What what is it? Did you do anything different in printing the, the driver settings? No, you did not, right? So it's your image, okay? It has to be. So keep adjusting it. Go use, I do not use ICC type printing, okay? Use black and white printing mode in your Pro 10. There, that's available, okay? In your color modes, use that, and then you can adjust. There's there's a a, a, a little wheel color wheel you can adjust the central point in what direction or another to counteract any kind of hue you may have okay and that's how you can dial that in and then once you have it dialed in if if everything you're going to print is black and white then by all means just use that setting because you know it's going to give you a nice linearly neutral result where do you buy gloss optimizer i am in europe well, from Canon, you know, what can I tell you? If you, if you mean uh, third party, what else are you using? Are you using all the other colors? Where are you using your, your, your other colors from? Is it third party or OEM? So I, I don't live in Europe, so I really don't have any, any contacts over there other than um, um, Octo Inc. in the UK. So... If you want a, a source for a third party uh, Chrome optimizer, now is that gloss optimizer for Canon or for Epson? For Epson is gloss optimizer, for Canon is Chrome optimizer. So, are you talking, Carlos? Are you talking about an Epson printer? Um, I believe way back, I still have some available. Uh, OCP in Germany, they have a good Epson type gloss optimizer better than probably anything else available. Switch the red with the blue, et cetera, do it randomly. I don't know what you're saying, my friend. That's re re in reference to what? Okay, Rick Johnson is here. Okay, well, let's keep. Let's be nice. Let's be nice. He is not. Uh, we had him here, and he's a nice guy. Chris Bell, why would you want to do that? Yes. Um. Yeah. Why? Why would you want to do that? Hmm. Just to see what would happen. Well. You know what would happen. Everything that's supposed to be red would print blue and and, and so forth. Um, again, I don't know why you would, not, you would want to do that. And then when you try to go back, that might be a problem with all this residual wrong colors in those channels. I mean, don't do it in, on a production printer because you're going to have to flush. Yeah, of course. If you just, you know, you can do any kind of experimentation you wish, of course. And um, and just have fun, but the truth is is going to be kind of ridiculous. Lazy Cap says hello again, Jose. Just wanted to stop in and say I finally managed to snag a Pro 100 when they came back in stock recently. Can't wait to watch all your videos on it. Yes, uh, please do that. We have a huge playlist on the Pro 100. Probably you know, like I always say. It's the most popular printer out there. There's nothing more popular. And only because of the situation that we were in, where they were giving them away for free. You buy a camera, you get a free printer. People were not interested in printing at all. So they had their camera and this printer in a box, and they were selling them locally, Craigslist, 100 bucks with the paper. They didn't know how to use a the printer. They didn't want to. So they just got that free printer, gave it away, or sold it. George says, Pro 10, Pro 1000 have 10 out of the 12 inks, which are common in name. Would it be possible to interchange these inks from one printer to the other? Yes and no. Okay, yes and no. The grays, okay, the, the Pro 1000 uses um, 
photo gray in gray. And I think, does it have a light gray? I'm not sure. I need to go back. I can't keep track of all of those different colors. But the grays on the Pro 10 are different, okay? They're different strengths. So do they match? I, I discussed this recently with Mike Lee from Precision Colors. He wasn't sure either, okay? He wasn't sure about the densities. For example, which gray should I have from the Pro 10 that will match, say, photo gray? Okay. Gray, photo gray. Is there, is there a, let me, I need to go look now. Pardon me. Yeah, it's two grays, gray and photo gray. So what strength is gray compared to the Pro 10 gray and light gray? See, the Pro 10 gray is a very dark gray. It's the same as dark gray on the Pro 1. So they've made it kind of confusing for you. Now, if you want to start to, um, you know, harvest inks from this, system to feed this other system so the reds again slightly different as well the yellow that might be interchangeable uh the chrome optimizer certainly is the photo black matte black certainly is as well cyan light cyan i think they're a match as well it's just the red is slightly different and the magenta and the light magenta should be okay to interchange so or, or mix Skip my question. See what I mean? I knew that would happen. Nick, what was your question? Let me let me sc scroll up. Again, don't feel insulted. I mean, I am doing more than most other, in fact, any other, any other channel does when it comes to uh, addressing you guys on the chat. I exceed anyone else. Okay. What about the new Canon Pixma Pro 200. Okay, I did find it. Okay, what about it? I'm not impressed. I'll, I'll be really truthful with you. I am not impressed at all. Um, what is it? What is it giving me? It's giving me skew, paper skew correction. Um, supposedly better inks. Why weren't? Are you saying that the previous inks were not good enough? No, the previous inks were really, really good. And so what is it that you're offering me that is so outstanding and, and groundbreaking for me to spend? I don't know how much a printer is going to sell for either. You know, what other options? Does it, ha it has a screen, I believe. So that's, on, that's, on, that's kind of nice, but not really necessary. Okay. It really is not necessary. Okay, sure. You can probably walk up to it and perform a nozzle check directly from it. Okay. Um, so what? You know, as far as the actual printing goes, it's not really offering me anything different or new. Now, I haven't checked to see what if they actually added some like slightly different paper sizes that are considered to be standard so that people that are doing uh, scrapbooking they work they work specifically with five by five eight by no five by five eight by eight and 12 by 12 sizes and they want to print on the paper that they get they want to print borderless and normally you can't do that so I understand Epson has incorporated those sizes as normal standard sizes that can be borderless printed on. So if the Canon Pro 200 offers something like that, then it would be a great unit for a so-called scrapbooker or anybody that is, is interested in crafting and are using square sizes. Other than that, it's just the same as the Pro 100. Um, put a little in uh, user replaceable wasting cartridge. 
oh, I will buy one like that, okay? That would be fantastic, okay? But other than that, I really has not, unless the specs that I have seen from the Australian report, they just didn't tell me everything. Maybe they didn't tell me everything. But I, I didn't see anything that was just, you know, oh, gosh, man, that's a winner. Okay, we got to get one of those. I know a lot of people think I'm a Ken, Canon lover, that I, I, you know, side with Canon only, and I don't like Epson. No, I'm open. I'm very unbiased when it comes to the printer brand. Just give me something that's going to really mean something as far as, like, features go. And, um, yeah, it, it's, it's not really one of those um, something that's going to make me open up my wallet. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Greetings from Ensenada, Mexico. Great info on how to remove green hue on my black and whites and my Canon Pro 100. Thanks for saying. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Uh, use black and white mode and then just use your adjustment. E even if you don't, even if you don't, if you have a Print Studio Pro or PSP, then you, you do a what's called a... I forget the name. I forget the name. Sorry. Um, but it creates a collage of the same image with slightly different variations. And you just take those numbers and apply, it to, apply that to the sliders. Boom. You look for the one that looks good to you and apply those corrections because it's using a non-color management system. And it gets you to a point where it's perfect. You see it. You did your test. It came out perfect. This is the one I want. This looks perfect to me. When I apply that and then print the big image, it will also match. It will be perfect as well. Okay. Is it the same cartridge? PGI 72 for the Pro 10? Um, what, do you, what do you mean? Yeah, the Pro 10 does use PGI 72. What are you talking about? As far as the same cartridge compared to what? I don't know. Yeah, it is a, it is a PGI 72. Ted, Ted, happy birthday from New Jersey. Yeah, please let me know what you mean by that. We'll get you squared away. Gecko says, I got my proper printhead for the HP Z3200 printing. Fantastic now. Wow, that's awesome. We'd love to show off the prints. Yes. Nito, Nito, Nito. Lulia Koloskova. Another beautiful lady. See that? We're attracting the beautiful ladies. That's what we need here. Happy birthday from the Ukraine. All righty. My wife is going to get jealous. I tell all these ladies that are coming on the live stream. Dirk Kola Ert. Kola Ert. Hello, Jose. I'm a new member of this group. Any sources for third-party ink that you may know in Europe? The only one I know at the moment that I trust is Octo Ink. I'll write it down here for you. www.octoinc.co.uk. And the other one is, I believe, Marut. But I have never used their inks. They won't send me any. You know, so they must not care. Or they're too big. All right. Henry Stoffel, happy birthday, he says. From someone who crossed the 70 year birthday. Yes. So we're we are there. Nolene, man, okay. Sterling Baldwin, happy birthday. I received two episodes of XP. Oh man, fifteen thousands yesterday. And I'm unboxing them right now. You spoke of firmware. What did you mean? Oh, shoot. How did you acquire two of those? I am dying to get my hands on one. Well, you missed my presentation, maybe, Sterling. Um, it's called, let me, let me find that again for you. Well, forget it. Let me just explain what it is. So right now, the 15,000, you either use OEM or or refillable cartridges 
that you have to buy single-use chips for at $10 each. OEM cartridges are $16. So $10 for the chip alone plus ink. That's really not that economical, okay, as far as I'm concerned. So the firmware that you install will disable the need for chips. You still need them, okay, because you don't want to foul up your printhead assembly. But you can then use those refillable cartridges with the same chip they come with. In fact, use them once. And then when it comes time to reset them, if they were resettable, you wouldn't need to. You just in, 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 install the firmware. And now, magically, all the levels will be brought to full. And they will remain full. You just have to top off the cartridges. Make sure that they are kept full. Okay? Otherwise, they go empty and you're in trouble. The ink indicator says you're always full, remember. But you're physically not always full. You're using up that ink. So that's all it is. It allows you to use third-party inks on this 15,000 pretty much for the life of the printer without ever having to reset it, okay? Or just use OEM. Okay, so that was it. I'm glad you got those. Uh, can you share where you got them from? Uh, I have a, a um, checked on, um, I think it's Best Buy for them to let me know when they get one in the store here. I'm just like 10 minutes away. Yes, metallic paper is what you be. So metallic paper is not sublimation, okay? Only only actual substrates like aluminum and, and, and wood and ceramic and you know, anything made out of polyester, for instance, is sublimatable, uh, not metallic paper. Metallic paper is just for regular photo printers. So I think we were talking slightly different points here. Again, photo printing, you don't sublimate to, okay? Photo papers, that is, I mean. Chris Bell says, Enola Holmes, what's if that's it? It was awesome. It was awesome, awesome, awesome. Loved it. You guys should watch this. It was done so well. Well, she actually, like, talks to you, the audience, every once in a while. The approach is just awesome, okay? I, I was telling my wife, God, I love this. I cannot sit through a two-hour movie, okay? I cannot. But this one, I sat, and I didn't even look at my phone once. Okay, that means it was a good movie. Nice looking chair. This bad boy right here, yes. I got that over at the uh, Staples store. What are your thoughts on the TA20? I don't even know what that is. Is that a printer, a special type of printer? Again, I know you guys call me legend and all of these titles that I don't really deserve at all. My knowledge is really pretty limited to just a small family of printers. I know them inside and out, but I don't know everything about other models and types. Those metallic prints look flawless, Jose. Yeah, um, they're they're real aluminum. Um, and that's not even the good aluminum, by the way. That's, that's the lower cost stuff that you buy on eBay. Stefan Trerotola. Happy birthday. Have you tried the Arc, 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 Arches or Arches? Uh, 300 gram watercolor paper on the Canon programs or the Canon Pro, I think you mean um, ProGraph uh, 1000. Lots of artists swear by that stock. I'm going to go ahead and look into that. Okay. Is that a, a brand? Let me see. Arches. Ram. What was it? Watercolor. Okay. Okay. I'll have to check that out. I'm going to go ahead and save that. All right. Done. Yeah, I'll give that a, I'll give that a, a try. 
because I like I like using stuff like that on my Pro 1000. Puskasu Dan, happy birthday on the from Bad Dorkheim, Germany, Deutschland. Here are a few breed. Here a new breed of Epson Pro 4900 will born soon. Um, the 5000, I think, is the what replaced it. I don't know what you mean. Um, uh, what you're referring to, whether it's actually the 4900. The 4900 has some problems, um, not quality wise, just problems mechanically. Okay, here's my my policeman right here. He's checking. 72 watching, 75 now, and only 31 likes. Yeah, smash it, hit it, hit it lovingly, do it lovingly. But, you, you know, if you actually mean it, do it, okay? That helps. Manfred says, uh, thanks, Master. No, don't call me that. Thank you. But if you, but if I use Canon black and white setting, then there is no point on using different types of paper. Right? Yeah, no, 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 no. You can still choose the paper type, okay? It, it, it just doesn't use a profile, okay? Believe me, trust me. If, you, if you're using a luster paper, just use Canon luster. Okay, you just not you're not going to be using an ICC profile. You're going to be on black and white mode. That is a specific mode. You'll be able to you'll be able to do it. Trust me. Puskasu Dan says because of delayed delivery from China, I cannot show something nice today to you and the others. Okay, what was it that you were going to show us? Uh, Oh, the 4900, okay. Yes, Dan. Okay, we'll call you Dan from now on. Great, awesome. Thomas says, happy birthday, Kufari. Sorry, I got to leave at a very early start tomorrow. Pleasure as always. Catch you up on the replay. Keep kicking those likes for Jose, everyone. Have a good night, my friend. Take care. I know you got to go to work tomorrow. Okay, so Dan says, and, and a question, Epson Pro 3800 waiting the refillable cards from China, but I reset it, two cards already in attempt to check the printer. Can I use them with the refillable cartridges? What do you mean you reset two cards already? Two of your OEM cartridges? If you want to use that ink, sure, you can use that ink. I think maybe that's what you mean. Sure, we're going to be doing that a little bit later. I'm going to take you through. Uh, some of the different uh, refilling process sees, and I'll show you how you do that. How to um, extract ink as well as how to um, put it in your uh, cartridges. Long questions. Ken Larson on my 3880 and was skipped also. I'm sorry, man. Um, let me see. Ken, how long ago? You said, what are your thoughts on the TA-20? And I told you, I don't know what that is. Was there something prior to that as well? I'm going to go back and see if I can find it. I don't see anything. Just go ahead and repost your question. It's fine. We're almost at the bottom here. Just repost it. Let me, you know, tell, what is it that you're trying to ask? And I'll, I'll take care of you. Uh, I will miss some of you guys, okay? Don't get mad at me. Cards are OEM. Yeah, so you're going to, you cannot fill them. As the way they are now, they cannot be refilled in any way, shape, or form. Unless you do an internal modification, which is very difficult to do. I have done it. And I will show you one cartridge that I have modified here. So, yeah, you can actually remove the ink by aspirating it with a syringe. Frank Lewis says, happy birthday. Hello, Frank. How are you, bro? Uh, OctoInc, co.uk. That's the one that my friend Martin runs. He is a father of a young boy and a wonderful guy. He also has available many, many options for Epson printers to capture that 
waste ink generated so that it doesn't go into your internal ink pads. And then once you capture it outside, the counter still counting, that's fine, but your pads are not being soiled, okay? So he has a kit that he developed. It's outstanding. I believe it's only like $20, and you also get, I think, for I think it's like $25, and you get like a, a reset code for your waste pad counter. Use the WIC tool to do that, uh, just like um, the ink, uh, inkless uh, company uses the WIC tool as well. And you can reset your internal waste ink counter so that the printer continues to operate. Otherwise, it just stops working. Nothing you can do can get it going again. So he offers that type of product as well. It's Cell Torres. How do you how to know if my printer uses water-based ink or pigment ink? They're all water-based inks. Okay, there's no difference. Dye inks and pigment inks are, have the same glycol-based uh, ink. Um, liquid media, if you will. Just some of them are just dyes. It's the colorant is dyes, and then the other ones are actually particles of pigment. So the dyes are just, you know, they just dissolve into the uh, solution, basically mole molecules, and the pigment inks are actually little particles. But the same, it's the same base. Um, and you have a HP Office Jet Pro, okay? Oh, you will sell me yours at cost. What was the cost? I, I mean, when I can get one, I can get it for three fifty. I would like to pay less than that, though. Really, that's why I'm looking for a refurbished model because all I need it for is to do this experiment, and then after that, I'm basically done. I'll do a series of videos and call it quits. Unless it's so wonderful, I fall in love with it. That might be the case. Hello, so Nikos from Greece with Canon TM200. And from yesterday with a brand new Canon TS83. Oh, you got an 8350? This is 8320. I got an 8320 back there. And uh, he wishes me happy birthday. So how is that printer working out? Have you set it up yet? And you have your birthday in two days as well. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, September for us is a full day. Yeah. My dad's birthday was the 14th. He passed away on the 19th. Mine's on the 26th. Both my daughters were married in September as well. So. St Sterling Baldwin, I was able to order them on Friday from Staples. I haven't looked at Staples. Uh-oh, wait a second. Let me check. See, why didn't Epson tell me that? I think I could just, if they had one on, on the store, I could go there. 15,000. Yeah. It's 350. Yeah. Okay. That, that, I may have to spring for that then. I may have to spring for that. And I can probably pick it up in store only. So I'll have to think about that. But thank you for letting me know, man. Appreciate that. That may have to be the only option. No. Cool. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you so much. Isel Torres, happy birthday, bro. Salud. Same back at you, my friend. Ken Larson, Canon Pro, Pro, ProGraph TA. What are these? What's a TA-20? What is that? Do dye ink printers output more vivid colors than pigment-based ones? Yes, they actually do because of the transparency of the inks. So I, I always use this analogy. If you are a woodworker, okay, and you have a beautifully textured green type wood that you made into a tabletop and you apply a pigment-based ink pigments are not transparent so they kind of block that grain you don't see it as clearly but if you apply an aniline 
dye ink, aniline dye stain, I should say, you will see that green just gloriously come through that coloring that you apply to the wood. But a the same color, but from a type of like a pigment stain, it's just dull by comparison. So the same thing with, with dye. Dyes allow the ink to pass through the surface of the print, bounce back, and give you a more brilliant view or look. Pigment ink cannot absorb some of the light and cannot possibly reflect as much light back. They will always look slightly darker, slightly duller in look. But again, for some papers, as long as you don't compare it to you know, a dye result on glossy paper, don't do that because you will always want that other one. Yeah, as long as you don't do that, and you're printing on that 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 um, beautiful watercolor paper that somebody just uh, somebody just uh, suggested. Just don't show me something else. Just let me see that one. Yeah, I'll see those the, the beautiful nuance of all of the different shades of color. That's what Pikmin excels at, by the way. And I will probably not care. This is gorgeous. I'm keeping it. But if you show me the same on dye ink on glossy paper where the gamma is going to be wider and it's just going to be more brilliant. Yeah, that don't show me that if you're trying to sell me that watercolor print done with pigment inks. It's as simple as that. But yeah, transparency is everything. Okay. Okay, there is no new Canon Pro, Pro 10 anywhere in the world except HK. Uh, Hong Kong. So I just bought one and will ship that out when I leave here. And the shipping hurts. Yeah, I'm quite sure it's not cheap. Okay, so what is it that you're trying to do then? Okay, the addition of light cyan, light magenta is inferior to light gray and red in new printers nowadays. Okay, yeah, you do have a point there. Some printers just really do not do not need the light versions of magenta and cyan if they have grays. The reset it OEM chip put under the chip sensor on refillable cards will work. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. The let me explain how that works. Here's 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 an a, a third party. Okay, 3800 or 3880 cartridge. The OEM chip that you put under it, it's only for color identification. It doesn't have to be reset. It's not providing any kind of ink levels. The top controller chip is, okay? That's the one that actually resets itself to full. Not your OEM chip that you need for color identification. See, otherwise, it doesn't know what color you have, okay? So that's that's the only the only thing that the top controller chip does is it contacts your OEM chip and says, "Oh, that's a yellow cartridge. That's a yellow a yellow chip." So then I will report it as being a yellow. Okay, that's all it's doing. Dog Fisk, Nan Nanian Naniamo, British Columbia. Wow, okay. What are the thoughts on the new Epson 9, P900? Um, fantastic. Okay. In, in fact, I guarantee you, you're going to have nothing but success. You will never be able to use OEM, I mean, anything but OEM inks. That's the only negative point. Because remember, we, most of us, do want to have that option if we choose to do so to print with some other ink product. It's not gonna be the case. It's, it's gonna be impossible unless chipless solutions or ink chip comes up with some firmware. And then once that happens, they have to create a new cartridge because they're not like these. They're smaller than these. And so it'll have to be a refillable cartridge that you can then refill and use, okay? But other than that, yeah, fantastic printer. Nothing I can say about it negative, you know. Nothing I can say about it that is negative. It's just that you know, if this is your first printer, then be ready. It's gonna be, it's gonna be amazing. Mm. 
Yeah. Sure. All Epson K3 printers have that. But I don't know about red. What printer is that? That has um, light cyan, light magenta, grays, and red. Okay, Matt Barnes says, hey, Ken, uh, the Canon ProGraph TA20 is mostly for, like, blue prints, posters, flyers. It doesn't have the full links. Oh, okay. So it's kind of a specialized printer. See that? Told you I didn't know. Cal Johnson says, happy birthday, Jay Toolman. They know me as Jay Toolman. I was paid another 300 for my final 3,800 print hits. For 3,800 print hits. Awesome. You've been... Hoarding those printers, right? You're worse than I am. But I'm glad you've been able to uh, liquidate them. Um, where is the best place to purchase for the Canon Pro 2000 at a great price? Good luck. Um, I, I would just look look everywhere. Some of the uh, camera shops may have a relatively good, you know, price for you know, like a uh, what size do they have? A uh, three something and. Uh, 700 ml i know that these these cartridges that i have here and we were going to talk about this but i just want to see that this is a pro 2000 and higher 700 milliliter cartridge i have a link to a gentleman that used to be um, basically inside canon and he has access to these and he can sell them to you in this condition, sealed in a in a bag. Actually, I opened this one already. Sealed in a bag, uh, original seal is not is not something that's resealed. They're absolutely OEM, you know, genuine. Two twenty five anywhere in the USA for free. Okay, so 225, 700, uh, 700 ml cartridge, ship priority anywhere in the U.S. And the the link is on my video description. So. I know you guys don't look at my video descriptions. There's so much in there. Believe me, folks. Please start looking in there. There's a lot of stuff in there you can have access to. Okay. So I guess that would be the best price because that will sell for 300 bucks. Okay. So for 225 is what my friend is selling them for. I get it for 220 because I'm his friend. So he, he cuts me a $5, you know, break. That's it. But those are absolutely original OEM cartridges. In fact, PC gets those, and then he extracts the ink so he can then subsidize, not subsidize, but um, replace the colors that he's not satisfied with, with the signature edition ink set for the Pro 1000. Okay, there's four of them. He's not satisfied with the um, yellow, the chrome optimizer, the red, and the blue. He's not satisfied with those, so he replaces them with the OEM equivalents for a little bit more money, of course. Otherwise, he would go broke. 300 How much is shipping, my friend? Let me know. You're on. I'll, I'll PayPal you instantly. Happy birthday from Norway, Jan Ingar Vic. Thank you. Thank you for the good wishes. Inc. Octo Inkjet in September 10 re release inks for the Canon Pro 1000 and 2000, etc. Will then will they send some to for you to test? Even if they do, it would be very difficult. Okay, you realize how much ink is always inside the Pro 1000 or the Pro 2000 for that matter? A ton of ink. There's no way you can really haphazardly test inks. You would have to flush it. And I am not going to do that. But yeah, technically you could do that, but you will lose all of the ink that you already have internally. And that's about probably about 40 milliliters on all of each of the 12 channels that you would lose. Okay. Otherwise, you'd be printing with those inks, even though you loaded cartridges with a new ink set. It would take forever for that ink set to really find its way to the printhead. And by that time, there's been some intermixing. So you would have to like repeat that maybe two to three times before you can be assured that you're actually running on Ink Owl or, or 
or whatever, or, or Octo Ink inks. And they come from the same place Precis inks come from. Okay. They, they are image specialists. Okay. Here in the US. That's where they get them from. The only, the only difference is that PC wasn't satisfied with those four colors I just mentioned. So their inks will be 100% third party. PC inks are what? Two thirds third party and one third OEM, just to give it that extra edge over everything else. Jeg569. Happy birthday from Scotland. Wow. Nico, release. What does that mean? Noel says, my question is more about if I have to choose between two printers, one has light cyan, light magenta, and the other one has light gray plus red. It's the light cyan magenta inferior in any noticeable way in color. Actually, not really. The red will come into play on just certain situations because red is red in the print engine, the way that there's little dots and mixes them together to give you the appearance of a red. It's just magenta and yellow, okay? But when you really want a super accurate red, a printer with red proprietary ink will be better, but only for that purpose, okay? A printer with blue ink or violet ink will be better than one without it whenever you have an image that calls for that type of blue okay so i can't really tell you which would be the best choice it's really very there's a it's a gray zone in other words i cannot give you a distinctive answer because there isn't one it's just a matter of the situation your image okay whether it demands this characteristics of that printer and others may demand this other printer's characteristics in other words depending on the ink sets that they have all right i'm glad we have a lot of questions here let's see we're about an hour and a half into this so i want to go ahead and quickly finish this and get into the refilling demonstrations which is what i really want to do tonight okay let me see uh, quickly here Jose Arias says, uh, hola, Tocayo. All right. He, this guy must be Puerto Rican. Yep. I inherited from a photographer an Epson stylus 4900. You know why? Because he didn't want it anymore. Yeah. It, it, was, a, it was a bad uh, printer as far as a lot of mechanical problems. Um, ah, boy. You got, a, you got a, a nightmare in your hands. Tienes una pesadilla en tus manos. Pro 4900 with some roll paper, 17 inch wide, and also 50, 25 sheets of 17 by 22. La, 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 luster photo paper. I like to print mine. Okay, test it. Try to print on it. See if it, if, if it actually doesn't have any clogs. They're not really clogs. They're other, they, they present themselves as clogs, but they're not. They had a problem with the dampers. They had a problem with air leakage. They had a problem with all kinds of things. They should. They never admitted it. They got rid of it. And in came the P5000. Okay. Because te lo dieron gratis. Just set it up. You got it for free. So set it up and, and, and just, you know, hope for the best. Um, people waste so much ink daily doing cleaning cycles on that printer because it just never, it was never, after a day of printing, you leave it overnight. The next day, you had what looked like a clog, but it wasn't really a clog. So you waste more ink, you know, again, for no reason. Jose says, a 15-year photo, but I can't unclog the nozzle. Okay. I have tried every, yeah, I, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You inherited a nightmare. You can go to you can go to printer forums like Epson printer forums and just search for the forty nine hundred, and you will hear it all. Not just from me. Uh, this, well, is there a correct paper type for each phototype? Um, again, that's all subjective. It's up to you, my friend. 
Um, I always suggest get some uh, paper sample uh, packs from the different companies, try it, see what works with what image. Um, I always say it, a little baby sleeping in a blanket, you don't want to put that on metallic paper. That's just not going to work, okay? You want to put that on a watercolor texture paper with a warm, a warm paper base, you know. Um, shot of the coastline of Alaska in the wintertime. If you're on a boat, on a cruise ship, again, not watercolor, warm base paper. You want a cold paper, glossy, okay, or or matte, but very, very cold, white base. So there's, again, you just have to try. And this, the sample packs are cheap. They're not that expensive. So just try them out. Don't go crazy with all kinds of different papers. Just kind of, you know, choose a couple, two or three papers max and that work with a variety of images and what works for you may not work for me may not work for you know your girlfriend or, or husband or wife or whatever you know um everybody has their their taste and again it's super super subjective it does not mean that what you choose is going to be the perfect choice the perfect choice for anyone else it'll just be for you hubert says greetings for poland thank you very much my friend I just bought a new Canon IPF 2100. Ah, oh, that's awesome. And I'm, I am waiting the delivery. Ink all sells the third party 700 ml PFI 1700 cartridges. Any experience with them? No, I haven't. In fact, I didn't know they were doing that. I didn't know they sold those. I think they're the same cartridges for the, the, the 2000, of course. Um, I didn't even know they had chips available for those. Uh, everybody's recommending just disable ink monitoring. But I didn't know that they had those. So, so far, again, because I have no interest in getting one of those monsters here in this little room back there. It just won't fit. So I haven't really gotten into, you know, exploring that family of, of new printers. My Pro 1000 is big enough for me at this point. But anyway, good luck with that. I hope it works out for you. And again, um, come back and tell us about it. Share with us all your experiences. We're all dying to hear. Sebastian K question, is it possible to use roll paper in the Pro 1000? Well, you can cut it off, but no, there is no roll paper function. You can cut it into sheets and use it that way. Do I have a birthday wish? Yeah, 15,000 from Epson, XP 15,000. I, I, I am anxious to get one of those and start rolling with that, that side of things here. I'm going to come up with an option for you guys. I just got my first Epson die printer, L. 850 that would be like the eco tank version here i hear epsons are famous for clogging no not these these are dye based um no epsons are not famous for clogging they clog because you don't use them that's simple simple fact cannons do automatic cleaning cycle so they never clog yeah but they waste a lot of ink okay no all printers clog believe me all of them do you don't use them they clog you use them they don't clog and that's a simple fact. Uh, Epsons will not run these, you know, every two day or every three day cleaning cycles. You have to kind of ignore them for a month. They'll run a big cleaning cycle and then they will say, I'm still clogged. You need to run some more cleaning cycles. Okay, well, that's because you didn't use them for a month. Canon printers, on the other hand, if you don't use them for a few days and you print something, it will preemptively run a cleaning cycle just to make sure that you're clear and you're good to go. Simple as that. So no, there is no, unless it's some kind of mechanical reason, like the 4900. Uh, no, there's really no big difference between the two printers, clogging more than others. Yeah, when you have dried up clump ink, that's not, that's from not printing. Yeah. How important is it? Very important. It is very important if you want to have even application of tonality as well as gloss. If the paper needs it, then if you apply it full, you will have a very even looking because different colors have different gloss characteristics, okay? You will have gloss differential. Your reds, magentas, violets, pinks will be less glossy than your greens, yellows, blues, and blacks, okay? So you need to add that that Chrome Optimizer to level it out. Basically, it's, 
pigment sits on the surface and is microscopically, microscopically very rough in texture. So the light hits it and it just diffuses. It will not look shiny. Okay, the other colors have a very smooth surface. Light bounces off of it without refracting or diffusing. So applying Chrome Optimizer takes care of all of those slight differences in reflectivity, okay? So that's why you need it. They know the reason why. They, they wouldn't include it if they didn't know, if they didn't feel it would help. It's not just for fun. It's be, it has a, a function. Is it worth buying a second-hand Pro 1000 for $700? Wow, I paid 600 for mine new. It fell off a truck. No, I didn't. Uh, new one is $9.99. I watched Rusty Nelson's YouTube video movie. Yeah, um, if it depends. It depends. I mean, you know, hopefully you can test it. More like more than likely you can't. It depends. Um, what kind of shape is it? I mean, I just I can't answer that. Uh, if it's in good shape, then yeah, it's worth it. You have the ability to change waste ink cartridges. That's not going to cause the printer to stop working on you a year or two down the road. You know, you just exchange it. Twenty bucks. Can I show you my prints after you do the refill demonstration? Yes. If we have time, okay, I'm gonna to try to do that very quick. I got a few more uh, questions here and comments. Moving the printer worried me. Always, always the case. I absolutely caused one of my two 3800s to stop working. And I moved it three feet. I don't know what the heck happened. Okay, I don't know. I don't even wanna talk about it. Farrar says, happy birthday to me. Thank you so much, man. Gecko says, it seems like the HP C3200 runs a little maintenance cycle every couple of hours. Yeah, it does that. If you, if if it thinks that any ink aspirated inside during a, a period of non-use is going to try to expel that air. And it's doing that for your own good. I know everybody thinks, oh, it's wasting my inks. No, it needs to do that, period. It needs to do that. Otherwise, you're going to be really upset, you know, $10 sheet of paper, and you get an artifact due to the fact that it wasn't firing ink, it was firing air. So it does that as a, as a just a preliminary preventative measure. If anybody would just simply understand that and accept the fact that this is inject technology is very, very tricky and highly, highly engineered. It's, it's, I'm amazed it even works. Tell you the truth. Rusty Nelson Photography, sorry, had to cut out as I had some friends in the gallery, but wanted to say great job on your live show. I know it's hard, but fun to keep going. Yes, you're going to miss out my refilling demonstrations, but you watch it. Make sure you watch it next time. I've been watching your stuff, my friend, as well. And I want everybody to watch uh, Rusty Nelson's channel. You will enjoy it. You will enjoy it. Okay. I'm seeing the Pro 1000 at 12 99 That's the normal retail price. But often you can get it for a little bit less than that. Do Chrome optimizers have any effect on print longevity such as fade and UV resistance? I don't think so. I really do not think so. I think it's just for looks, for help, help the way that it just, to help eliminate gloss differential. That's all it is. Luke Poe says, uh, for Noel, the things to do to avoid clogging in Epson Pro printers are print regularly. Yes. Clean the parking station every three months. Yes. Clean every three months the heads with PSF flush. That makes sense to me. Okay, I'm going to sleep, legend. See you next week. All right. Okay, let's get going here with the demos. So what should we do first? Mm -hmm. Let's do a Pro 100. Hopefully this will work out. We have a clip installed. I already reset it. Um, we need a needle with a syringe attached. And we need some PC42 ink. Okay. So this is SE, by the way. So we're going to pull up uh, about... I'm going to say about eight milliliters of ink because really 
we just want to go ahead and prime this and I'm going to give you a little a little trick that you can do make sure I don't mess everything up here do one of my little pieces of paper toweling I'm gonna clean this up a bit all right so we're ready to roll but not quite yet see I already got ink on my fingers that's normal that's part of the process don't avoid it enjoy it I'm going to take this off the clip remove the clip now this cartridge has been flushed and it's been sitting around God knows how long I'm going to go ahead and inject a little bit of ink here in the port right there hopefully I don't, I don't make a big mess right there just a little bit I'm going to go ahead and saturate that notice it's actually entering slightly there we go just let it do its thing that's it I just want to get that wet it a little bit okay just like that okay now that we have done that I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the clip we can flip it up right side up again notice what happened here see that we have saturated that end and again this is because this cartridge sat after flushing forever okay remove the i gotta make sure i remove the fill plug we have of course modified this cartridge for refilling i'm going to insert the needle into the port and i'm going to inject the ink and just let it fill let it saturate that sponge notice it starts from the corner adjacent to the liquid chamber add ink and let it begin to saturate there may be some little air pockets don't worry about that as long as that port down here is wet okay that's what you want to achieve add more ink now the initial charge will be about 13 to 14 milliliters of ink so we loaded eight and unlike your OEM cartridges that are never going to be saturated to the top these will become saturated because we have already tampered with them so it is the untampered cartridges that are never filled to the top okay let me see if i have one here to show you guys i think i may have taken it to the back no here it is no that's not it yeah i took it to the back let me see yeah i took it nope i don't have it here anyway so i've shown you that before it has ink all the way to the basically almost to the top i think you can see here this is a brand new cartridge it was just run empty and you notice the top of the sponge never became saturated with the factory film that will not be the case here so we're going to add more ink this takes a while don't worry don't hurry it just keep on adding ink and just let it let it rise and then once you get to the point where you don't see any more ink entering don't worry about the fact that it may not saturate the very tippy top of the sponge in fact you don't want that you don't want ink liquid ink to get into that serpentine vent remember when you remove those tabs before you install them that opens up the air vent to allow air to enter to replace the ink that is leaving otherwise you would create a vacuum type situation you don't want that okay so i've injected already all the ink i'm going to aspirate a little bit more ink in here from our bottle i don't know how much is here and again we're not going to measure anything there's no need to do that i'm going to add never go you know higher than that okay see the liquid chamber never go higher than that when you're refilling let it let it equalize itself notice i don't have any kind of huge pockets of white sponge anywhere let it do its thing notice it's still trying to reach that top right it's going to do that eventually by tomorrow probably so we're going to go ahead to that point right there that's it i don't want to go any higher the idea is to never let it touch the bottom of the fill plug i'm going to go ahead and insert that 
and I cannot backlight this, but I think you can see where the bottom of the plug protrudes. See how it's at? It has now almost filled. It has almost saturated to the top, but it has not entered that that area where the uh, so-called um, vent is. I could put this right on the printer right now. Again, I could top it off a little bit more as well. Okay, but this has been saturated properly. This is ready to be used. So I'll put this down, put this out of the way. Let's go ahead and do a Pro 10 cartridge. And I'm gonna show you how to reset that properly as well. Let me wipe this again. And we'll put that right here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the top lights off so I can see better. Then you're gonna see my messy background here. There we go. Got my train layout behind me still. My drones are on top of it, my big drone. All right. Let's do a Pro 10. I have my resetter plugged into the USB port, one of my USB ports. So we're going to go ahead and reset this. This is filled with um, Chrome Optimizer partially. I think it weighed something like, um, anyway, it's almost full. I'm just going to add a little bit. I'm not going to do a complete fill. I just want to do the reset so that you can see how this is done now. So this is pretty much full, okay, minus a few ml. How, do you, how, how are you going to reset it and not spill ink everywhere, right? So hold it upside down. Hold your resetter upside down. And I want you to look right here in the front. Let me aim it toward you. I don't know if you can see. See that little flashing red light? Now it turns red and it goes out. This cartridge is now, this cartridge is now reset. And we can unplug this to free up some USB space. All right, that's now ready to be filled. So we're going to proceed to do that. Now, if this was a cartridge that you bought empty, let's just say from eBay, more than likely, it's not going to be ready to be refilled. It will accept some of the ink, but not all of the ink. So the way we do this is you absolutely have to, where did I put it? Right here. You absolutely have to put this on a scale. You're going to put it on the scale, and you're going to watch the weight, and you're going to hold it in this orientation facing up the port, that is. So I have my ink. I have a little bit of Chrome Optimizer here. This is OEM. I um, got this from my PGI-29 cartridges for the Pro 1. I had a bunch of those, and I'm running out, but I have a whole 700 ml cartridge right here that I can take some ink from. We'll get to talk about how to do those as well. So the way you do that is you literally just simply apply the ink like that. And you're going to be looking as the ink is being absorbed to the point where it starts to kind of, oh, I'm not showing you, am I? Like that, like that. You're just going to add the ink. See that? It's drip, drip, drip. Add the ink. I think I'm running out almost. That's it. It's beginning to flood. At this point, it is beginning to flood. You see that? You see the little flood of ink? Well, you want to stop. In fact, you can let it come down, squeeze, squeeze the bottle, squeeze the cart, and remove that little bit of excess ink. You weigh it. It's now 32 grams. You're set. You're set to go. Pop it back in your printer or put the clip back on it and store it. Uh, you're ready to go. Now, That'll work just like I just demonstrated on your cartridges that just went empty and you immediately refill them, reset and refill them. If they're empty, you can reset it, you know, in this orientation. Nothing's going to spill. But if you've got cartridges that are that do not have one of these clips on it, that's how you get them from eBay often, whenever you can get them, that is. So they have to be treated a little bit different. If you do not have one of those homemade adapters, basically with a syringe um, hub attached here, that you can attach a syringe uh, in a, a syringe and then pull back and collapse that that um, bag, 
remember there's a there's a, a pleated accordion bag internally in here and there are some little paddles that actually agitate the ink you have to re collapse that that bag when it is empty and you just took it out of the printer that bag is still collapsed and then you can go ahead and add ink i mean as far as you can as fast as you can flow it in it will be absorbed and the bag will refill with ink but those dried up cartridges no not so so you have to collapse the bag and then very quickly add some ink and you may have to do this if you don't have one of those adapters then what you do is you add a little bit of ink and you squeeze it and all this foam will come out because it's, there's all this trapped air inside okay blot that foam relax your pressure on the side you're squeezing the, the cartridge sides by the way and that will go back in add a little bit more ink squeeze the foam back out again yeah and do this over and over and over and over until you weigh 32 grams if it appears full but it only weighs 28 grams then you got a bunch of air in there taking up the room that could be filled with ink you see what i mean so you have to constantly squeeze that you'll see foam coming out it's easy with chrome optimizer because it's not going to stain you but with the other colors yeah you're going to have a mess so you keep some towels ready you're going to blot blot every time you get foam you blot it relax allow that to retract and then add some more ink it's a pain in the you know what but once you do that and you get it to work the first time it will never happen again just make sure that when these run empty you can let them run empty by the way quickly reset it fill it basically as fast as you can pour that okay, you need to get these okay these are imperative you need to get these as fast as you can pour that it will be absorbed make sure that you wet the complete sponge not just concentrate on one area keep that sponge always wet so that all of the ink is basically in liquid form and not drying up in the corners or something like that of this oval shaped sponge you see that you don't want the ink to begin to crust up because you only applied ink even though this is sitting you know facing down on the cartridge on the printhead uh, that is it could happen so it's just one of the things you need to avoid when you're refilling this these are easy as can be the easiest in the world to refill but there's still some things you need to make sure you follow okay so that's pro 10. let's go to the pro 1000 okay then we're going to touch on the 3800 cartridges these are oem by the way so we'll touch on those as well pro 1000 where i put you baby right here we're just going to use water okay now ink owl Ink Owl, and I don't want to play their video because I'm not allowed. But you guys can go to inkowl.com, you know, type in Pro 1000, the search criteria, and then you'll get their products for the Pro 1000. They sell no chips, and then they give you a video as to how to approach this. Now, the empty, the empty cartridge is 32 grams, so you need 80 ml of ink. So that would be eh, approximately an, an ml equals a gram. So you add... 80 grams of ink or 80 full ml so what they want you to do is to you know you buy their bottle it's uh four ounces or 120 ml whatever but you only need 20 i mean you only need 80 so you're going to end up with 20 ml you can't do anything with okay i mean you you could i guess you can top off the cartridges because you know when you go down to like 60 you can top it off with the 20 you have left or the 40 you have left or whatever why not buy your ink in the correct volume to begin with so that's what pc does now ink owl i'm not i'm not you know choosing one over the other i'm just giving you the facts ink owl is the standard basic ink set that ink i mean ink specialist produces pc is the same ink set except they replace red blue and yellow and chrome optimized with oem okay so right there it's already superior it's the same ink okay it's the same ink but they just replaced those very critical colors with oem it was the only way to achieve what mike felt he needed to achieve so what they'll have you do 
is load up a 30 ml syringe and we'll show the process in a minute and then another 30 ml syringe that's 60 and then 20 and that's 80. dude just use a 100 ml syringe buy yourself that okay here's the refilling tip for it actually let me see we're going to do this a little bit different guys yeah this is going to be fun this is a tip for something else sorry so what we're going to do is we're going to use the bottle the bottle that the ink actually comes in because having to use a syringe three times it just seems crazy so we're going to go ahead and put this 80 milliliters of ink actually it's 82 they gave you 82 milliliters of ink in a bottle okay that's it and i'm going to show you how this comes let me get this out and put this aside so it'll come with a regular cap and they're going to give you one of these with a special tip you're going to screw that in you're going to remove the foil the sealing foil and this is the original bottle you make sure that it's nice and tight otherwise you'll have a mess okay make sure it's nice and tight okay that's the big warning now where's my cartridge okay so here's the empty you either replace the chip, replace it, and now you have ink monitoring, or don't replace it, and then basically disable ink monitoring by holding the second button five seconds after you get the declaration that the cartridge is empty. Okay, you hold that button down for five seconds, and it will allow you to now continue printing, but with no ink monitoring. Okay, I'll use the chip. I'll pay 12 bucks, okay? I'll pay 12 bucks. So here's what we're going to do. There's no vent. There's no way for me to, you know, fill this any other way. Unless I drill a hole and I literally put a plug on it. I could do that. I could do that as well. as, uh, But this is the way to do it. So you're going to take your ink bottle. You're going to hold your empty cartridge like this and press as far as you can go. Flip it over. And now you're going to squeeze. You're going to create a positive pressure inside. Let go. Squeeze. Let go. You see the air coming out back into the bottle? That's the air that's being pressurized inside. And I'm replacing it with liquid ink. Now, remember, you can, you can squeeze air, but you cannot squeeze liquids. So we're going to squeeze that air and let it escape. Replace the space with ink. Let it escape. Let it escape. And if I start with an empty cartridge, here's the critical point. You start with an empty cartridge, and you have the correct volume of ink. There's no guesswork. You don't have to weigh anything. And we're almost there, folks. And now I just, yeah, that's it. I just, I just got a little bit of air in there. Now, don't worry about the air. Do not worry about it because... There is an air gap inside, okay, that you have to actually maintain. So, 82 gets you slightly a hair over the requirement. Now, if you think you have any pressurized air, just press that pop it valve a little bit. Boom. You just release the air. This is ready to go into the, your printer. It's done. Did you see me dribble any, any water anywhere? No, you didn't. This actually weighs now the proper amount. And if you replace the chip, then you have ink monitoring. If not, then you have to disable ink monitoring, and you just kind of have to basically constantly check this. And I would check it by weight. You don't you don't want it to hit 32 grams, okay? You wanna you wanna get it prior to that. So because it won't tell you it's empty, it will not. Okay, it has no clue. So that's how you do that. So what about? Let's go back way back. Let's go back way back. So I have an older cartridge for this baby right here. It's an R340. Now, for you guys, I had a 2200, a 2400, a 2100. You could get away with this. Let's go ahead and open this. I'm going to sacrifice this. I'm not going to actually use it, but. We're gonna go ahead and, and 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 do something interesting. Let me get this in the trash can. So, 
At one time, they had special little valves that you can install. You notice at the bottom, this is how you can identify what Epson older cartridges you can actually do this to. You have to look at the bottom. New ones do not have that. Let me show you a new cartridge. You see the difference? Let me show you that too undersides okay that hole right there that's not a hole that leads nowhere okay these two things here those two indentations i don't know if you can see them those are holes that have been covered those are the factory fuel holes so you insert this little valve through here you actually with a tool you press it in and now you can take, insert one of these little doohickeys, a priming tip. Move my drink out of the way. You insert a priming tip into the port, okay, with a syringe. You can either do this one of two ways. Two priming tips attach one attached to a piece of tubing and then one on a syringe run the priming tip either here or here and put it in the bottle where the ink that you're going to use to refill it lies still then load up your syringe with more ink than you need okay like if this is a 14 ml load like 25 ml in that syringe you insert it here and it's going to allow you to pump ink in okay Actually, no, backwards. You insert it here. Sorry. I, I just remember this is a long time ago. I got a long-winded video. That's what it's called, long-winded. You stick it in that in that valve, yeah, and you inject the ink. While the ink is being expelled, any air that's trapped inside is being expelled. And then you continue pumping ink in until you get nothing but a solid stream of ink being then basically recycled to your original ink bottle. That's what you're doing. So you're actually forcing ink in. It's going to push out any air. Remember, these. there are a ton of little passages inside here, a ton. And so you want to expel all that air. You cannot just drill a hole on top and add ink. Impossible. It will not work. So you use that method. You're going to push ink in, and ink is going to be expelled along with air and everything. Once you're not exposing any air anymore or expelling any air anymore you know that cartridge is full so now what you do is you see this little dimple right here right there the little clear spot you just basically push on that like that and it will then vent it it will vent any or, or release any pressure that you may have built up uh if the, if it looks like that you cannot do that now you can get away with a with no valve by plugging that somehow with a with a, a silicone plug of some sort but you still need a way to maybe push the ink in and again it's a little difficult to do but something that we used to readily do a long time ago we did it all the time but again that's going back in time now right now epson has made their cartridges like unrefillable okay so that's why Epson always, always uh, has a refillable cartridge uh, type cartridge that you know China creates. And if 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 at all possible, they have chips that will auto reset or whatever the case, or they can be reset manually with a resetter. But as far as you you know being able to um, modify them, not anymore. Now the P eight hundred, I can modify those cartridges. Okay, and then with chipper solution, perfect system. Let me show you what that is like. So here's a one for the for the uh, 3880, 3800. Uh, now, this cartridge right now I think weighs empty. It would be like bone empty. It would literally be like 60 grams. Okay, because they they are rated for 80 milliliters, but they have 90 from the factory. They give you a cushion, and that's excuse me. That's 10 ml you throw away every time you change one of these, even when it's declared empty. It's not really empty. So 
this is the resetter that I, I used to use. It's a new model out as well. And it's not this one. This is an old one. But it, it works with my old cartridges that I have. Uh, newer age cartridges don't really work that well. In fact, right now, people are claiming they cannot reset like all the colors. But you can reset most of them. So the way you do that is to simply do this. You see the red. And then it goes away. Okay. So let me see. Okay. So that is ready to go. And now I have modified this internally. If you're curious as to how to do that, I got a whole series. I got a playlist. PGI 70. PGI, I'm sorry, T58 modification playlist. Go back and check, check that out. Now, I have here, so this needs about another, I don't know, like 8 ml of ink. So we're going to insert a special tip. You notice there's a little notch on the side. It's hard to see because it's dirty. Let me clean it up for you all. So there's a little notch on the side. That's because if it did not have that notch, and that's, I used to do that. I used to machine that, and I used to sell sets, but I, I was not making any money on it. So I decided to stop doing that. I don't have any more of these tips anyway. But you can get them. You can get, um, if you look for, uh, in fact, from Octo Inc., they have them. Um, they're just called uh, Epson priming tips, something like that. So. That little notch allows the head of the tip to not seal itself against the surface of the puppet valve. That's what you want. So we're going to go ahead and, whoops, see, I got ink all over myself already. Piglet. I'm glad I brought some of these down. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put it in, push and inject the ink and the ink is literally going inside the ink bag and i could at this point if there if i if i suspect there's any air i give it a little smack on the table and i draw back and I'll, i'm getting solid ink so i know there's no air in the bag and then i would go ahead and weigh this and make sure that it weighs the proper amount which is 150 total grams of weight so empty was 60, full is 150. That means you have 90 milliliters of ink inside. And this is ready to go. It's ready to be put into the printer. All right. So that is about it for that, isn't it? And then now how to harvest ink from these big cartridges, especially for all of you um, Pro 1000 users. Let me go ahead and put this back in here. There's the non-invasive way, which is a pain in the, you know what? Because these ports are different. These are cartridges from other Epson printers as well. They have the dual port system, which is really kind of uh, interesting because one is basically to allow air to enter and allow ink to escape. So one is the vent. You see the vent does not have yellow on it. This is the ink delivery port. So what you need to do, what I do, is I take a short needle and I insert it into the vent. And then I take a syringe with a longer needle. I insert it into the yellow port. And then very carefully without tipping it too much, because you'll, you'll get ink spilling everywhere. You suck out some of the ink and then you apply it to whatever you're going to fill with. Now, another way to do this would be to just hold it this way. Okay, like this. With a hand drill, just drill a hole right here in the handle. There's ink in here, okay? This is hollow. And then drill a like a little vent hole and then just pour the whole content into a half a liter or a three quarter liter, I mean, uh, bottle. And that, that way you can harvest all of the ink that way. And then you could, you could decanter it into smaller volumes if you want to. And that will be the easiest way then at that point. But yeah, it's a pain in the neck to harvest the ink any other way. This one here, I'm going to put this in a bottle. This is black 
a photo black ink that I can use on my Pro 10 as well. It's fine, no problem at all. So that about covers. No, no, it does not. We're gonna hit the the Pro One for those of you who have Pro One printers. Now, here's a dismantled Pro One cartridge. You can see the internal ink bag. Okay. Here is a untampered Pro One cartridge right here. Okay. And it has a third party chip attached to it. You have to actually um, modify that cavity to allow the fatter chip to sit flush. Otherwise, it will not. And I just have it attached with some. Um, like um, this tacky stuff that they use in museums to put objects on a shelf, okay? And uh, I can just pull it right out, and that's it. I can replace the chip when needed. So to refill these, it's a little bit tricky. This is a third-party cartridge, and it's missing all kinds of technology. Okay, see that? Never, ever, ever, ever put these in your Pro 1. Uh, more than likely, you will have a huge problem. It'll, it, it, it'll, it'll kill it. Okay, um, it's missing all sorts of technology. It doesn't have, it doesn't have a keyway. You see here, you have a specific keyway, so that I cannot mistakenly put this in the wrong slot. I could do that with this, and if you do that and you close the lid, you're screwed. Okay, you cannot open that lid anymore. It will not respond. So. That's, you know, there's there's no light pipe inside to tell you the light condition. Full red means you're good to go. Blinking means you're low. And again, the, I think it's the, no no light, that means that it's, it's empty. And so, yeah, none of that is missing. So do not use these garbage cartridges from eBay. And uh, only use your originals. You will have to modify them, like I said. And I used to do that, but I just cannot afford to do that anymore. I, I just don't have the um, capabilities to do that any longer. So anyway, let me let me take you through the, the refilling process. If you look inside here, I don't know if you can see that clearly. Let me orient this. Gosh, there's no way I can do that. Here's the external port. The port acts as both a venting and also ink delivery outside so it allows ink to leave and when the back begins to collapse air has to enter this cavity behind this mylar covering okay so this port has dual functionality when you refill it you have to have a special tip okay it requires a special tip i have them on the other room you're going to insert the syringe with the tip attached you're going to pull back collapse that bag Okay, and then you're going to insert the ink in, and the bag will the bag will expand when it reaches what is it? Um, forty three grams, forty four grams is empty, eighty five grams is full. Okay, so that's what you do. If you do not seal, you will get ink inside this space. That's a no no. You don't want to do that. Good luck taking that out. Don't ever puncture this. Okay or you will not be able to pressurize that cartridge properly. So, or or allow, I didn't mean pressurize, I mean to balance the the uh, the uh, inside pressure as ink is being come out, um, pulled out by printing. You don't want to create a negative uh, pressure condition. And so, yeah, so, or, or no pressure at all. Yeah, it'll be terrible, don't worry. Just Just don't mess with that. I didn't explain that very well, sorry. Uh, just don't mess with that. Don't dismantle it like I did. This is just for demonstration purposes. So make sure you're sealed tightly against it. This is the wrong tip, but make sure you're sealed tightly. You have the correct volume loaded. And you could do that simply by weighing the cartridge prior. And again, you're gonna subtract from, from 85. So whatever the weight is, if it's 50, you're gonna add what? 35, right? So 35 ml. Boom and inject. Okay. Like that. And if you are sealing tightly against it, you're not going to get ink leaking because the port is not actually like sealed against the external port. 
it's tricky. So when we first started screwing around with the Pro One, we realized that, oh, no, you got to do this specifically this way. And uh, one of the pioneers was, of course, PC himself. Um, he's the one that came up. He actually did a dissection of the printer cartridge to make sure that we were doing this correctly and realized, oh, wait a minute, these are built a lot different than any other Canon cartridge we've ever used. So we have to approach this a little bit more carefully and more precisely. And so, yeah, that's that's how you do all of these. Now, your, your refillable cartridges for like Epson printers, they come in two varieties and I don't have, I don't think I have both. Maybe I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do actually. Okay. So here is an auto priming cartridge. And you could tell these, if you look at the bottom where that little wire screen is right there, you see that little arch looking element right here, right here. It looks like a little arch. That's an auto priming cartridge you just add ink and it will auto prime itself meaning that it will it will immediately have ink at the exit port okay you don't have to do anything else <coughs> these have to be vacuum prime the priming chamber is actually located on the upper corner right here <coughs> that space right there is a priming chamber so what you do <coughs> now i got a cough you get a relatively large syringe. You need to have one that has a simple tip on it, like this. You're going to insert it with ink. <coughs> Say you have whatever. It, this takes 29. So you're going to load some ink. You're going to load some ink directly with a needle. Just fill it about halfway. You're going to insert this syringe tightly against that hole okay you're going to pull back and then you're going to push back that will create a vacuum internally okay i don't have the uh, oh here's what i did wrong where's my port i don't have a plug here you gotta have the vent plug installed sorry that way you can pull a vacuum you pull a vacuum when you let go it will then fill that priming chamber. That's what you need to do. That's the that's the only critical spot. Once you once you have filled that priming chamber, then you can just simply add ink with a needle or a bottle. Doesn't really matter, like this, whatever. As long as that priming chamber is filled, you're good to go. But you can only fill it by vacuum filling. And so again, I don't know. Ah, here it is. Sorry. Here's my plug. So now I'm gonna go ahead. I have already added about half the volume. See how it see how it's kind of going down by itself. The bigger your syringe, the more vacuum you can develop. Oh, look at all that ink I got on me. Alrighty. So yeah, that's it. And then you create that vacuum. You're going to prime that chamber and add the rest of the ink. You're going to top it off to whatever you know volume the cartridge takes. And so actually that's a more reliable type cartridge as far as ink flow goes. The only catch is that if you ever let it go to empty, you're going to have to reprime it again. And you're going to have to come up with a way to seal this. Okay. Um, a good tape might work. I use a rubber compound. It's like a putty. And I put it in there and I seal it and I go ahead and reprime it. Do the repriming step again, and it'll be fine after that. Uh, you might lose priming. Why? Because you went beyond empty, maybe. <laughs> yeah, you did not pay attention. You went beyond empty. Uh, your chip told you you still had ink, and you actually ran out. Okay? That happens. Not too bad. Okay. We'll wash that off later. Anyway, I think that's about it. Um, again, like I said, the regular refillables are easy. These are easy as well. These are primed a little bit differently. You add the ink, and then you just simply do this. Take this plug off of the side here. Okay, there's a little port in there. 
you're going to take a syringe attach it to the port and suck back and you're going to draw back some ink you're going to draw back some air initially and then solid ink remove it put the plug back on it and you're good to go now you can top that off a little bit more until it is full you're ready to go that cartridge now is primed and it will deliver ink to your printhead otherwise it will not it just will not now let me put this little rubber tip back in here for those of you who have cartridges i have a little bit of ink in there for those of you who have have cartridges that ride on top of epson printheads not canon epson printheads and you have a stubborn clog maybe that printer sat for a year like that one okay you remove the cartridges of the offending channels piezo flush is expensive but wonderful there are also other like um um what was the something bullet i forget the name uh magic bullet and so you load up an amount of that you insert this into the spigot there will be a vertical male spigot that mates with your cartridge in other words enters right here and seals itself against that o-ring you're going to remove the cartridge and insert this over that little spigot you're going to seal it and very very gently and slowly you're going to add a little bit of fluid pull back add pull back you want to unlock the printhead and move it over some folded paper towels just like you do with the that so-called uh, Windex treatment. Again, it's just back and forth. It might take you a whole week to get this done, but be patient and then just continue adding. At some point, you'll be able to run that whole two to three ml of cleaner through it. Again, repeat, 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 be super gentle because you don't want to delaminate the interiors, very delicate passages of that printhead by applying more pressure than you really need to. So if it's not going in, then don't force it. Stop. Stop what you're doing. And again, that's a last, last resort, actually. If the soaking or if you load uh, refillables with, with some kind of cleaner and that did not do the trick, then this will be the only option you have. And it's got to be only for printers whose cartridges ride on the printhead. Not for stationary cartridge printers like the, you know, the P600 or the P800 or the any of the large format printers. They have cartridges that do not move, and they feed by inclines. You cannot mess around with that. That's a no, no. You don't do that unless you're a printer mechanic. Okay, you don't disassemble, disassemble the printhead assembly for no reason whatsoever. So, if you have a let's say a, a R1400. Yeah, you can do that then. At, at 2880, yeah, you can do that. 2400, yeah, you can do that. 2200, yeah, you can do that. Any printer like that one, yeah, you can do that. Okay, as long as the printhead has spigots on it that the print cartridges mate against, then you can mount something like this. This is just regular rubbing, rubber tubing. There are various diameters. You need to find the one that works. And again, use that cleaning type uh, operation i'm going to have to do that to that printer and i might go ahead and videotape it while i'm doing it but i got to get some refillable cartridges first so i can set it up uh, like new it's a great little printer it produces really great results actually all right let's go ahead and deal with some more questions here and see what else we can get accomplished so that was it as you saw yeah it's just a way you know refilling is is something you need to do correctly okay we're not supposed to do it. So don't think you can just do it, you know, haphazardly. You're going to have problems. It's not it's not intended to be done. We can do it, but you got to do it. You got to approach it correctly, or you're just going to have more problems than you ever wished you had, okay? Ink delivery is going to be worse than ever. And, you know, Canon printheads are a little bit more delicate than Epson printers. Epson printheads, I mean, uh, Epson printheads can take quite a bit of abuse, but not Canon printheads. They're, they're thermal type 
uh, although they are stronger than you know most of us give it give them credit but yeah it's not something you can be abusive with so just make sure that you do the process correctly especially when dealing with canon okay let me get this ready for later on all right so let me see if we had anything in facebook see i welcome all the new members and that was nice everybody everybody likes that they reacted nicely to it and i try to do that every time we got a couple more here we have uh, almost five thousand right now so we're doing really well and the uh youtube channel is up to i think it was thirty six thousand three hundred and something which again is pretty amazing if you ask me okay Somebody wants to know um, what is a good sublimation printer to just starting out. And again, I always say it's an Epson printer, and you can use something as as anything that's you know the basic four color type printer. And the magic, the the, the key here is refillable systems. You have to be able to use a third party type cartridge with it, and then it's just a matter of choosing inks from whomever. And there's some crappy inks out there, just as just as there are, just as there are for photo printers, there's some crappy sublimation inks. Uh, PC has some really good ones. So those ink out, by the way. So in this case, you don't have to worry about gloss or anything like that. You're going to be sublimating onto all kinds of different substrates. So that's not an issue. An issue. You need a good transfer paper. I use A dash sub, and it's good. You can also buy paper from. Um, Condi, C O N D E dot com. And they have top of the line stuff, with really good stuff as well. But I have found that the um, the A sub paper is good enough. That's what I have done for everything I have. A couple of, uh, it's a big steam locomotive on a, on a mug. I did that with that. I did that on my four color uh, Workforce 1100. The more colors you have, of course, the better your your um, ability to to have a more a more uh, pictorial look to your images. Especially if you're not doing anything, if you're doing something that if you're doing only graphics, okay, like I could do like my you know happy printing everybody mugs, okay, those just have one color, red, maybe, maybe a little black border. Who cares? I I can't. I don't have to worry about. You know nuances of color. I'm printing graphics, but if I'm doing photographs like the ones I showed you earlier, the two Indian girls uh, models, yeah, you need something with a lot more ability to give you more fidelity of color. And I got that with just a four color printer. Imagine if I had used the R3000, eight colors. Wow. So I'm using the A sub. I'm using currently the 1100 which is junk, and I have a good heat press, very even temperature on the platen. That's critical, critical. Good, even pressure, critical, okay? That's because you're going to transfer that printed image on that transfer paper onto a substrate. It has to be reversed on the transfer paper, left to right, okay? Otherwise, the letters are going to come back, become, you know, if you have text, you're going to have backward text. Everybody's faces are going to be flipped the wrong way. Yeah. The sign that's supposed to be on the left is going to be on the right, and it's going to read backwards. So you have to be very careful that you always print your transfer images 180, in other words. Okay. So then comes the, the, the key of all of these variables is consistency. So you're going to experiment like like crazy. You're going to find out what works. Okay, pressure, amount of pressure, time, temperature. Okay, that's your three variables. Once you do your transfer print, you're going to go now do your actual molecular transfer, if you will, to your polyester coated substrate. Heat, in other words, temperature, pressure, time. 
So you got three things you have to kind of orchestrate. There are some suggestions for you, but there's it's not going to work. Believe me, it's not going to work. Okay, you got to find your 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 perfect conditions. You got to fine tune it, and then once you reach that, that's it. You're set. You can reproduce. So for my mugs, I have a a a standalone press for mugs only, and it's pre-programmed. Okay. It's always going to be identical. It's pre-programmed. And I could do photographic transfers like this, or I could do I could do graphic, whatever I wish, and I know it's going to be correct. Okay. So that's that's what's really cool about that. So for that person that's asking on Facebook, again, uh, as long as it's an Epson printer, and it depends on your, your maximum size. The bigger your final result that you wish to have, I, pointing at my aluminum back there, the larger the press has to be. In fact, it has to be two to three inches larger than the maximum edge you want to cover because maybe around the edges, it might be cooler. Maybe you think it's 400 throughout, but the edges might be 380. That's not good. You don't want to have to print something that's going to utilize the edges when it's going to be 20 to 30 degrees cooler, okay? That's going to affect the way the edges of that image look. So you want consistency. The more you pay, the more consistent that heating element will be, okay? So, yeah, it, it's a lot of fun. It's beautiful. The results are majestic. But, again, you're, you're introducing a lot more variables. It's not like just printing on paper. The paper is always the same, at least from that single batch. And you know it's going to perform this way. And if you use these settings and you stick to those settings, you're always going to get the same results. If your monitor is calibrated, it's going to match to a certain degree. It's never going to be perfect, but it's going to match to a certain degree. And close enough is close enough. The same thing with sublimation. It's even, it's even more uh, likely to not match your monitor. You're looking for your final result. See if you like the way that looks. Not necessarily whether, oh, it matches my monitor or not. It's not going to. It might be a slightly yellowish result. That's very, very likely to happen, so you have to then adjust. There are no ICC profiles that a system that you create with your regular Epson card, you know, printer that you buy off of eBay or from Epson. There is no ICC profiles for those systems. Only, only Sawgrass. Printers have ICC profiles for their products only, okay? So, yeah, there's no such thing. So you have to accept the slight differences in color rendition and make those adjustments with maybe a layer adjustment, uh, do a curve adjustment, whatever you need to do uh, to take away that slightly yellowish result. And that might be because of temperature or pressure or time. Who knows? Again, so many variables. But the results are great. So they're very rewarding. Enough about that. Let me go back. We got a bunch of stuff here to go over. You know what? We don't have time to any any anything else. I'm just gonna go ahead and answer the last bunch of um chat entries here we might be here till like eight o'clock who knows we'll see all right let's see da -da -da -da. i think we stopped was it this one how important yeah i, I did i did cover that okay can i show all right, you wanted to show your prints, but if I let you do that at this point, I'm going to get a lot of angry people here. Look at all the people I, I need to uh, talk about first. So let's go ahead and do that. Charles Verbruggen says, moving the printer worried me. Uh, I'll try to do this quickly. Farah says, happy birthday. Uh, yeah, okay, I think we did cover all of this. Let me see. Rusty's there. We got him. Twelve ninety nine. Yeah, that's. Do chrome optimizer have effect on print longevity? No, it does not. 
Okay, I think we did that. So that's good. I have an Epson 2400 that uses, okay, here's the, here's the last one. Uses K3 pigmenting. Okay, sure. Um, I print a print perch page every day along with nozzle checks, and it does the trick nicely. Okay, so let me show you that now that you brought that up. So I just, on the Pro 1000, let me, let me see if I have QImage open here. I'm going to put this over here on my other monitor. We're going to share it. So here's QImage. And I did a custom perch sheet. You can see right there using the um, colors that the Pro 1000 includes. And here's the result right here. Let's go back. So if you're not printing at all, if you don't have anything like constructed to print, any images, you have to do this sort of thing. Okay, you have to. So I do the nozzle check for the Pro 1000, and then I do the purge cycle, purge unit, I mean image, whatever you want to call it. They call it unclog. And does this really unclog your printer? Maybe if it's got, if it's got a few a few um, nozzles that are you know, borderline clog, it will unclog it. But it's not a nozzle check. Don't ever consider this as an actual nozzle check, okay? My camera's getting confused with the lights on back here. Let's go dark. So don't ever consider this to be a nozzle check. It is not. It's just like like doing, it's just exercising your printer. And so that will just ensure that, yeah, it's like it's like printing a regular image. I would prefer you printed an image because at least you produce something tangible. But that will get you basically uh, exercise, in other words. You will not have any problem. And then later on, when you come back, so if you can schedule that, you can schedule it to print that, at a whatever schedule you wish, like every two days, every two and a half days, whatever. And then you can go off on a couple of weeks vacation. You come back and you'll have several of those prints. You just got to leave everything on. And hopefully you will not have any thunderstorms that will knock out your power because then that, that will not occur. Um, but anyway, that's a good uh, way to keep any printer, you know, exercise. Awesome. So, yeah, you got to do that. It's not an also check, so consider the fact that, you know, that's not going to tell you if you're missing nozzle. Sure, you may see some missing lines here and there, but it's not the same as a nozzle check. The nozzle check is specific for every single nozzle that's actively being used. Happy birthday, Roberto Lorman, a master in photo printing. Thank you very much for all your knowledge share with us. Thank you. Thank you, man. We still got 53 hanging here with us. I'm getting a little tired, to tell you the truth. Michael says, bye for now, back next week. All righty, nice to have you. Hope to see you again. Tango, yes, how you doing, man? I hope everything is good in Germany. Really nice to see you. Daughter and me are tested, but everything's okay after she had a case in her class. Oh, man. Greetings from dormant Germany. Yeah, they're going back to school Monday at the Catholic schools here. And we're going to keep our grandson home. We're not going to expose him. So we're we're back to the routine. We just get, we get to go in a little bit later, uh, half an hour later, because now they have to deal with the, the students in, in, in school. How do you add the gloss up on QImage for Canon Pro 1000? What do you mean? Um, that's done in the driver, not QImage. So you don't have to worry about that. When you load up anything in QImage, if you're referring to the uh, unclog tool, there's no need. Once you choose um, whether you're going to print it on a glossy paper, then it will automatically use Gloss Optimizer. But you don't add that. So I think that's what you're asking. I'm not sure. Agent X, I have some of these valves. Oh, yeah, there you go. For the TO59 cartridge carts and Epson 2400. 
I stopped using them because they leak all over the place. Did you, you know, did you have the little uh, rubber balls? Okay. I I use the the little rings that, that go around the, um, they're like little old rings that go around the valve stem itself. But then I added a rubber ball behind that and that stopped the leaking. Tango says, Hubert from Poland, your name sounds quite German. I am in da -da 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 -da, and other Polish places three times a year. Okay, that's a private conversation. So the OEM chip is damaged if we set it and pull on refillable. No, it's not damaged. It's just you don't need to do that. You really don't need to. It's not necessary. It's just going to use it to ID, ID the color. Epson Stylus Pro 9800 uses positive pressure system on the cartridges to push the ink through the tubes and into the dampers. I think so. Yes. Um, all of these, all of these types of cartridges have ink bags inside. So once you see an ink bag, then it's pressurized. Has anyone tried the Ink Owl Epson 2400T? Oh, 59 refillable cards says, do they work? Do they leak? No, I have not. I have not. I really, to tell you the truth, I also did not have very good luck with the uh, refillable 2400 cartridges. Uh, that's why I went ahead and start to um, uh, modify those originals. And since you're able to do it, you know, why not? It seemed to work the best. But again, I had to use the rubber ball on top of the uh, regular O-ring on the uh, stem. The O-ring was supposed to expand and allow you to inject ink in, but it would not come back properly. It would not reseal. So I just added that little ball. So yeah, I had to put a new ball every single time I refilled the cartridges, but I had a ton of them. I eventually sold everything to someone. I don't even remember who it was. Cal Johnson, Agent X. I only had tried the Epson 1430, but I overfilled and can't know if they leak and was over or was my overfilling, but I would think a product for sale would work. Uh, yeah, well, it goes back to properly refilling, okay? Um, if you buy a product such as that and it underperforms, not to your liking, you got to answer, you know, ask yourself, did I do the process correctly? And again, remember, these are all workarounds that these companies have come up with. And, you know, you can tell me they work, they work, they work. I say, well, no, it's not a warranty. It's not a guarantee that it'll work. Only when you do it correctly will it work. And even then, I mean, you have quality control issues with these types of cartridges. They're all built in the same factories over there for everybody. I don't care who the seller is. They buy from the same place. And so quality control is like this, okay? So you may have five cartridges, five sets, and you have to throw away this one, replace it with this one, and, and so forth. And you get one or two sets that are reliable every single time. Even ruined a 2400 head due to leaks in proper operation. Yeah, you got to be careful. Yeah, sis for the 2400 again. Oh man, too much, too much hassle because they don't design them. See, they don't design them for the chassis. The only sis, and it's against all of my preaching. The only SIS unit that is designed for a printer, a specific printer, is the one for the Pro 100 from Ink Products. That's the only one. It actually fits perfectly inside because it is designed for that chassis. Okay. All the other ones are generics. The only thing that are not generic are the actual cartridges and the chips. Everything else is generic. You got to find a way to to you know adjust that belt of ink lines and it'll flop all over the place and yeah it's not it's not it's not very reliable whatsoever 
I just I just scroll this and I lost my way here. Okay, here we go. Okay, yeah, I got a sis for the thirteen the fourteen thirty new. I'm waiting just to buy enough ink to get it going. Yeah, um, I often have to. Uh, whenever they tell you to stick this little sticky Velcro thing here, that means it's not designed for that printer. Really is. It's just a generic sis unit. And it's going to cause problems. You may not even be able to close the lid any longer. If that thing was designed correctly, you would be able to close that link, that, that lid. But it's not. <laughs> I'm glad, Tango. So it became a ritual, a ritual on my weekend. Thanks a lot. Happy, happy many years to come, my friend. All right. And good luck in school, my friend. I know you told me a couple of things just recently. Happy birthday from Nap Napanee. Cal is that California? Yeah, I guess so. Manfred Dan Chan says, it is normal after you're getting the print. The print has, is still moving. After getting the print, you mean after it's printing? After it gets done printing? Um, is that what you mean? That the printhead assembly will do a couple of more? Yeah, it depends on what it has to do post printing it might it might do a few more movements here and there cal johnson how did you how did you have a border on the q image per sheet i've yet to locate any controls i don't have borderless chosen there's a minimum border that it, that if it, it forces see you 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 you've fit it to the Paper size, so it's, it, you 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 do a queue, so it loads up the image on your on your layout, and just fit it. That's it, and then it's gonna, of course, because I'm not printing borders, it's gonna impart the minimum side and up and down borders. I can feel it is still moving back and forth for a while. What printer again, Manfred? If it's a Canon printer, yeah, they do that. HNX T zero fifty nine X card valves. I got, I got did not have the refilling balls. No, you have to buy those separately. Yeah, they don't. If they don't, you know, I I tell you the truth, they were not really being sold for that purpose. They just happened to fit. Okay, and so that solved that problem. The leaking. All right, there you go again. Who who there? Again, guys, I cannot get everybody, okay? So don't get upset. Here we go. I own a, a new Canon Pro 10, and the first ink can, cart is showing with a note that says gray cartridge getting low after new cart ready. So it's a brand new cartridge? Or is it an older? It's already used. Should I wait until the car is totally empty? Yeah, until it's empty. Yeah. They have an ink bag inside, so you can go empty, no problem, and then replace it. You don't want to waste. You don't want to throw away any ink unnecessarily. The rule, if you will, of um, taking your um, filling your, your, your cartridges when they are low is only for the Pro 100. Okay. And you should really have two sets of cartridges. Okay, love. <laughs> wow, who, who can read this? RSDunfeePhotography.com. Okay, love your stuff. Well, thank you. Cal Johnson just gave me a birthday present. Look at that. Thank you so much, Cal. Appreciate that. Manfred Chan Pro 10. Okay. So yeah, it's doing its thing. After each print job, the perch unit, which is the parking station, is a, is an area where any any excess ink collects, or when it, when you're doing a cleaning cycle, it sucks the ink in there. That has to be perched so that it's clean. Any ink buildup that's there will be then transferred to as a smudge on your next print job, unless it does that draining, if you will, of that that parking station because the print is going to sit there 
is going to seal itself against that. And if there's any ink, liquid ink on that surface, it's going to attach to the uh, nozzle plate. It's going to be transferred to your next print. You're not going to be happy. So it has to do that. All of those motions it, it does, it's, they're, they're necessary. Don't worry. It's, it's for the good of the printer and to keep you, the user, happy so that you're happy with your results. Okay, Tango Armin says, hello, Larry, I can answer. I think empty cartridges still have ink left. Don't worry to print until, yeah. The Pro 10 cartridges will be empty. The, the Pro 1000 cartridges will be empty when the empty uh, no, notice comes on, okay? They, you will not be throwing away ink if you're just, if you're actually using OEM cartridges, well, don't worry about, you know, throw the, throwing them out or recycling them. They have no ink in them. Okay. So Larry is taking care of Jose from, hello, Jose from Vancouver, Canada, Jerry Russo. Art of women photography. Hey, wow, you must be just waking up over there in Australia. Hi, Jose. I finally got a chance to catch the live stream being a long time since I won. So, yeah, okay. One of these days, I need you I need you to uh, come live with me here and show us your work. Maybe, um, gosh, wouldn't it be awesome if you could do a live stream of one of your photo shoots? That would be amazing. I think a 1,000 people would come in to watch that. I have given up on refilling the TO-59 cartridges since I can get OEM cards for that, a third that price. Yeah, let me show you something, guys. Um, you may actually think I'm a jerk, but I couldn't pass it up. Okay. Thanks, Master. I got a great tips from you. Oh, awesome. Okay. I think that's the last one. So let me show you guys what, when I got the R2000, I didn't realize that that printer was going to become the new t uh, direct to garment choice, okay? So these small companies overseas that have, I mean, a circle of these printers, they just have a chassis that has been stripped and modified to hold a t-shirt carriage, okay? Where they mount the t-shirts and this carriage passes through horizontal through the machine and gets printed on. But they're using a white ink because they need to lay down a white base first and then on top of that, they print the image in color. Otherwise, you cannot print on a dark material. Okay, the ink is not opaque. So you need white paper ink, basically, to create the appearance of a sheet of paper. And then on top of that, you print. Okay, it may be the like the base of the image itself, whatever. It, it uses white ink. It's titanium, titanium oxide ink. It's very tough on printhead. It destroys them. So these people need as many printheads as possible. So they buy and they cannibalize tons of R2000 printers. And what they end up with is tons of inks, OEM inks. Let me show you. Don't drool. Packs, stacks, stacks and stacks of OEM R2000 ink. I was paying $8 per set. That's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, $8 a set. So, and the reason for that was because they had they had no use for them. They could not, they just couldn't couldn't use them. So they had to resort to some way to, to liquidate those inks and they selling them on eBay. Right now they're asking like 40, 40 bucks for a set, 50 bucks, and that's still not too bad. When you consider, you know, eight colors at what would normally be like fifteen dollars each, you know, so that's that's what keeps me still owning owning, uh, owning that that uh, R two thousand because I really have, realistically speaking, I really have no use for it at this point. But I have it. I'm going to set it up again, and I'm just going to print a bunch of stuff. It, it produces really great color, really strong color. It is quite nice. All right. So I think it's now time. I think it's we've been at this for three hours. My throat is a mess right now. Please continue to watch. Please continue to 
join the Facebook group. I have lots of goodies there that you can actually get on the files tab. I'm going to be loading some more stuff as well. Um, we got almost 5,000 like-minded people. I barely ever get involved as far as me getting into a discussion with someone because you guys are helping each other. You're doing a fantastic job. And I was just able, my job is to just kind of get this community together so that we can all help each other. Uh, the channel is doing well. I think my exposure through New York Magazine really did a trick. Uh, I'm being talked about everywhere. And so that's good. Let them all come here. I just want more companies to um, discover me, especially the third party companies. Uh, those are the ones that are would be more interested. And just provide me with samples of their materials and I can test them and sell them. It doesn't matter what it is. Test them and not sell them, but you know, promote them. If they live up to the claims, I will definitely promote them. Um, Hopefully, I'll, I think I'm going to go ahead and jump on that uh, printer. If the guy that offered me the one for 300 uh, can offer me a good shipping, I'll jump on it. If not, I'll order it And uh, from, uh, I believe it was Staples. All right, so Rod Levesque just dropped a $10 Canadian super sticker. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate that. And Charles says it is 1 a.m. over there, so... Everybody should go to bed. Uh, that's living on the other side of the world. I don't want to keep you guys too late. Make sure I hit everybody here. You could invite one of the alternative printers. Very interesting stuff on Facebook. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's... Tell Mike that my... Yeah, it is. it is expensive. It is. I, I agree, uh, but it's not Mike. I mean, that's just what's available. So we don't have too many other options. Okay, Pro Pro 100 still have ink in the cartridge one. That yes, of course, uh, you're dealing with a, a uh, sponge cartridge. You cannot drain that. You cannot drain that to this condition. Okay, so you have to have ink when the the cartridge says it's empty. Simple. Um, there's going to be about two maybe two and a half milliliters total ink left in that sponge. It's not something you can actually use because it uses a sponge system. Yeah, sorry, but a couple of milliliters are going to remain trapped in that sponge, okay? That's the way it is. So we just have to live with that. Uh, but it allows us to refill them, as you saw earlier. Where's my nicely refilled card? Now that I turned the lights off, I can't see anything. Here we go. So all I got to do is add a little bit more ink right here, and I'm I'm set. I can add that to my, throw that on my printer, and it'll be just fine. Okay, let's see what else we got here. All right. 2400 is not just the inks. It's more the card that is designed for to the tight spaces required for ink to be delivered to the printhead. Uh, yeah. Um, any any kind of um, inconsistency in the design of the cartridge will play havoc. I mean, it'll just raise havoc with ink delivery and leaking and, you know, yeah. So the only thing that's pretty much 100% almost is OEM cartridges. And even those, they're not perfect either. Sometimes you get a failure. Okay, so Charles is going to bed. Like you said, the super sticker looks like a blue pair. What? Yeah, well, you know, that's what a super sticker is. It's a new thing that they have. StreamYard chat isn't showing it to you. Yeah, I don't believe. Yeah, it doesn't show, show it to me at all. Maybe when I, um, if I decide to view it later, maybe. Art Women Photography might be going live with a lightning workshop I'm doing to teach other photographers on the 1st of November. Okay, remind me of that. Um, message me. The last yellow CLI 42 card I flushed and refilled. I dried out with compressed air. Didn't have to wait two days to remove the excess water. It takes a while. Yeah, it takes a while. And if you don't do that, it may not absorb the ink like you wish it would. 
didn't even, yeah, didn't even what? Uh, what did it weigh at the end? About a little less than 14 grams. That would be perfect. All righty. Okay, I think that's about it for now. Let's go ahead and uh, jump over to here. We'll undo that one. Please say goodbye to everybody here. Okay, if you're still with us, we got 38. Give us your goodbye. I'll play some music, and I'll take a little drink. And I have a donut here to eat. I'll eat that upstairs. That's how I celebrate my birthdays now. Have a donut and some drink. Uh, let's see. So I think that's it. I'm getting tired. There you go. Too loud. Turn down that volume. And yeah. So 14 grams is the best. And likewise to you, my friend. Glad you were here with us. Always a pleasure. I'm going to eat my donuts. Go ahead and post your goodbyes. I will post them here as I devour this little donut here. The best there is. Mm. Okay, that'll work. Do that. I mean, don't hesitate ever to do that. You're allowed. Oh, I know. When I came back from Europe, I hadn't had a donut for three years. When I came back and I was living in my new quarters, in Virginia, somebody knocked on the door and it was some high school kids selling Krispy Kreme, five bucks for a box. I bought two, the best. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Tell you the truth, I had no clue what I was going to talk about today. And I decided, hey, why not talk about refilling? And I think that worked out pretty well. You guys saw that it wasn't that difficult, right? I hope so. I hope that came across that way. There you go. There goes your health, my friends. That's it. You're screwed. One of my addictions. All right, so long everybody, happy printing, and bye-bye.